What's up, everybody? Welcome to Ink Drink Think, Episode 5. Today, we're covering Wonder Woman, a superhero with a lot of points of conversation to cover. Um, a character who, in a lot of ways, is enigmatic. Um, she's the main lead female superhero that most people think of, but at the same time, most people don't know anything about the character. So hopefully this episode has a lot of cool deep dives that we can cover, or lack thereof. Anyways, I'm Mike Pickard. As always, I'm joined by my joined by my Wonder Womanly talented co-hosts and friends, Johnny Wise. Johnny, you're up. Hey, how you doing? I'm Johnny. Um, so we're gonna be like, I hope we're redesigning Wonder Woman in a way, and uh, I wanted to incorporate uh, a little bit of Inktober because it's spooky months now. And I'm very excited by that. Um, and the first word was fish, so I played around with that a little bit um, and didn't really get anywhere. So realized another one of the words was blade, and that already fits with Wonder Woman. So I've gone with kind of a God of War kind of feel to it here, like in a battleground kind of feeling. Um, and yeah, hopefully it should be all right. I, I finished the pencils pretty late this week, but I've got them done now. <laughs> For and uh, showing up without a finished piece. I, yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not what I'm used to, but uh, while we were talking at the beginning, I was just rushing it out there to make sure it's finished because I can't, I can't have that. But um, <laughs> I'm ready now. <laughs> and tonight I am drinking some brandy uh, in honor of Mike reaching 100 on his Kickstarter. 100%. Yeah. Not 100 hey, thanks, man. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. I yeah. appreciate well it. Well done. Congrats. <laughs> I had to put away the harder stuff because I was getting uh, a little too deep in with retakes of the intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to pace mine a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As always, we're also joined by our co-host, Nate Wells. Hey, guys. Nate Wells, also joined by, this is my daughter, Laura's. Oh, there's my other daughter. That's Sadie Killer. Um, <laughs> I guess they're going to be here this time. She's chewing on my headphone cord, so I'm going to lose this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, doing a Wonder Woman redesign, like Johnny said. Hey, they're fighting. That's all right. That's cool. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to get into it. Had a little trouble with the pencils, but I think we are good to go. Probably do a little bit of pencils on this one before getting into the inks. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about it. Uh, drinking a little Bud Light tonight and um, got my Post Malone going. Uh, in my Superman powerful pickup lines, pint glass. Probably from Spencer's gifts a long time ago. So yeah, cheers! I'm excited. What are his pickup lines? Superman has pickup lines. Oh, there's so many. Uh, Want to see why they call me the Man of Steel? Um, <laughs> my X-ray vision tells me that you've been working out. That's two of them. That's that's, that's the top two. Right there. There's some there's some bad ones. Good thing I can breathe in space because you send me to orbit. So. No, I got some good ones. Those are solid. I didn't think the first two were uh, were going to be the good ones, but <laughs> I guess you started yeah. off with the quality yeah. there. Yeah, really? There's a big there's, pop up on those. There's a few more. I'll, I'll sprinkle them in throughout the episode. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. So if there's any cuties listening, <laughs> all right, let's go. <laughs> I've got a cute dog and a cute cat, too. So. Yeah, the show is now devolving into Nate's Twitter. <laughs> that'll be linked that. that'll dog. be linked in the description uh my tinder is down below so check me out i take really good pictures so i'm gonna put a link to like an image on google image of like a blobfish or something anyway. yeah yeah let's do that <laughs> we're also joined by teacher todd himself todd blackwood todd you're up hello this is my uh my face now because I can't, I have to, I have to, I can't get this thing to see my, uh, my screen without it. So anyways. Well, we can't uh, see that either. Okay. What's that? <laughs> Can you see it? Okay. Yeah. Give you, yeah, I, that's good. I, I think I got a little further than everybody else. I got kind of excited about this one. So you can watch a little bit of the time lapse. Um, but yeah, it didn't, I was it had intended on doing a Jack Kirby thing and uh, it slowly morphed into redesigning your costume and going in all kinds of directions they had not planned uh, at all. Um, so one, I think Wonder Woman maybe more than any other character is somebody I could draw 
over and over and over and every single time she'd come out different. Um, and, uh, but it's because there's so many fun motifs and stuff going on. And, um, yeah. Anyways, Michael. Well, Todd, I think you touched upon a really great point right there, which is the fact that Wonder <laughs> Woman, a, a palette for uh, rediscovery and invention, which I think is really yeah. great that we're doing this redesign today. Um, yeah. So if I flip my camera real quick for the audience, uh, my Wonder Woman take is um, uh, heavily inspired by Greco-Roman statues, um, has a gladiator feel to it. Um, one of the things with this design I really wanted to push was like a statue come to life, which is something that yeah. I think um, at its root is very Wonder Woman. She's a very right. um, uh, strong yeah. female lead character who uh, <clears throat> lasts through time and has a lot yeah. of ancient iconography, but also fits in modern settings. Um, so yeah. I thought that would be an interesting concept to play around with here. Um, yeah, she's so got mythological... Mm. Yeah, that looks great. Yeah. But yeah, so anyways, I'm going to split to the multicams. So guys, for this so, episode, Todd uh, said that he had a really great starting conversation piece as we got started here. So Todd, the mic is yours. Yeah. Well, so I grew up uh, on the Wonder Woman TV show with Linda Carter. Um, and I think the... the uh, the other version of Wonder Woman that, that really deserves recognition to me is in the Super Friends. Um, and the reason I, I think that um, she might seem kind of uh, indistinct, maybe from the other superheroes uh, on that show, other than I, wh whoever the voice actor was that played Wonder Woman on Super Friends, to me is the definitive Wonder Woman voice. And I, I urge you, if you're interested, to go back and check it out. Um, she has a very, not deep, but very commanding voice, and it's different than the girls on the show, for instance, like uh, uh, Wonder or, or, or the one Zan and Zeke, the Jan. Um, and so for me, I was obsessed with two shows as a kid, um, other than the Adam West Batman, and that was the Six Million Dollar Man and Wonder Woman. And unfortunately, or for better or worse, the only reason that Six Million Dollar Man was technically better than Wonder Woman is because it had better villains. Um, I have one complaint about the old Linda Carter show, and that is that the villains were non-existent. And that was that baffled me as a kid and was a trait of all superhero television shows like The Hulk, Spider-Man, some of the others that are lesser known, I, other than the Batman TV show with Adam West. But anyways... Um, but my mother loves this story where when I was on my way to kindergarten and I was going in a carpool and I got, uh, we picked up my next door neighbor, this little girl named Erica. And I, as soon as she got in the car, of course, I was like, we need to talk about Wonder Woman. And I was like, Erica, <laughs> did you watch Wonder Woman last night? <laughs> and she goes, no, of course not. <laughs> and I was like what <laughs> and i go what why not and she goes because my mother said it's stupid <laughs> 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 and i remember my mom said and i watched your head explode and uh, it, like <laughs> um but i thought that was interesting that like you know it it i can step back from it for a minute and make the observation that like here's this little boy who's obsessed with this television show about a female superhero and meanwhile my female friend across the street is the same age doesn't like the show and thinks it's stupid and that's mostly because her mother told her, told her it was dumb <clears throat> um which i always i i don't know i just find that really interesting um but one thing about the show that I, I, I really came across is the, I think that Wonder Woman is sometimes misinterpreted as a character. And I think that for her, like she was a super mom. I like the mom quality in her. And I think that's what differentiates her from 
Supergirl, Batgirl, Power Girl, for instance. Maybe more than any other female superhero that I can think of, I feel like she's got a mom quality to her that, that kids, kids, any kid can relate to, you know, uh, at, at that age of like the, the mom that comes out to the playground and rough grabs the bully by the scrap of the neck and is like, leave my kid alone. You know, there was that kind of quality to it that um, that I I enjoyed. And Linda Carter, hands down. I mean, man, if you haven't seen the show, incredible. Well, I feel like the, the, the term strong female character gets thrown around a lot these days, and I'm not entirely sure what it means. Like, I, I, you know, does it mean that they're like they have super strength, that they're perfect? Um, uh and it's to me, it's like, well, if Wonder Woman's a strong female character and Supergirl's a strong female character, what's the difference? Or is there one? Or do they all blend in together? As hopefully you, you know, you wouldn't want you would want them to all be individuals. Um, so for me, yeah, I mean, DC characters think... are totally different from Marvel. What was that, Nate? Was that you? No, no, uh, was, that was uh, me. I I John. think that term a strong female character is pretty uh i i don't think it needs to be like you don't need to be like well there's this character that's a strong female character and there's this one that's a strong female female character where's what's the difference i think it can have nuance like any male character yeah yeah i think it's well written characters you know right Um, yeah i think that's 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 the main thing I think my I think my only issue with it is that it's a term that's so vague at times that it can kind of mean anything. Um, so I I, it, I I don't know I yeah I might get, be getting myself into trouble here, but but uh, <laughs> I don't want to I I I want I I want to hear more about what that what strong female character means exactly. Um, you know, is it the same thing as well written? Wow, that was so much more profound than I was expecting, Todd. That's such a great... It was? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, of course, fitting for Wonder Woman uh, as a yeah. character, being like at the forefront of female superhero characters. Um, yeah. You're really touching upon something there, that question of what defines a strong female character, which is a term yeah. I, I used in this chat, and now I'm contemplating yeah. what that actually means. Um, as yeah. you guys have just pointed out, like, is it strong writing? Is it just a character yeah. that um, feels authentic <laughs> as a human being? Or is, yeah. it, is it that confidence and the, the strength qualities that define the character? And I, I assume we're all thinking the same thing, that it's actually the well-written part. Because yeah. no one would argue that Spider-Man's not a well-written character. But Spider Man is a very right. different character than Batman. But no one would say yeah. that neither are like strong male characters. Um, but, but that's yeah. a good point. Like Wonder Woman versus Supergirl. Um, to yeah. use that term, strong female character, is it just like a <clears throat> label that you slap onto a character that's like, oh, well, they're a character with personality? Because that's just yeah. uh, insensitive. <clears throat> Like these characters should be people. They should be just like any other character who have issues and uh, morals that they ascribe to. Um, Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. I I think super often, especially when we're talking about genre, you know, strong in quotes female characters tend to be, you think about them, they're the badass chicks, you know, you're thinking about Mad Max Fury Road, you're thinking about Ripley from Alien. And, you know, I love I love Ripley from Alien, but that's not the only kind of strong female character. You know, right. you could have, uh, you know, in a teen drama, uh, you know, the girly girl, the, the cheerleader could yeah. be a strong female character. The nerdy chick could be a strong female character. Um, a show about a single yeah. mother could be a strong female character. Uh, I think uh, Selena Meyer from Veep is an incredibly strong female character. That show's hilarious. She's a complex character. She feels like someone with identity uh, in the show. And so really when I think about that term, that's what I think about. Are they, and I think uh, 
uh, Johnny, you may have said it, or, or Michael won, where it's like they, they feel they feel like a well-rounded, real individual. Um, yeah, you know, much like a, a male character. There, I mean, there should there should absolutely be no difference in in how we talk about characters yeah. based on based on gender. Did you did you ever hear that that George Martin, the guy that wrote Game of Thrones, some reporter goes, "How so? What's the secret to writing strong female characters?" And uh, and uh, George Martin goes, "Well, I think of them as human beings, just like everybody else." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Wow, what a revelation. Yeah, what do you know? <laughs> well, it's funny, we're calling it a revelation, but at the same point, um, something yeah. Todd had brought up at the beginning was uh, I mean, there are, of course, celebrated Wonder Woman runs. Um, but are there, tell me about them, because I don't know. I don't, I'm not up on them, I guess. Well, I know in particular uh, one that's recently come out, which is Wonder Woman Dead Earth. Um, oh. that's one that a lot of people are talking about and, and hyping as a, a great Wonder Woman story. And I know Brian Azzarello has a celebrated run as well, but yeah, but awesome. compared to her contemporaries, she's a teammate of Batman and Superman who within superhero right. comics have had some of the most prolific comic book runs of all time, whether you're talking yeah. all-star Superman or, um, year one with Batman, it, it's very mm -hmm. fascinating that this character who completes that trifecta in pop mm -hmm. culture doesn't have right. the same um, well-versed library of or catalog of books to showcase that character as a, um, a commodity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the premise of Dead Earth? Can you, can you explain it or is it, yeah. should I not? Um, so from my understanding, I haven't picked it up. It's that Wonder Woman oh. wakes up in a post-apocalyptic future. Oh. And it's almost like a Mad Max landscape with Wonder Woman with some slight mm -hmm. amnesia having to figure out what had happened to the world in her sleep, <clears throat> in her absence. Oh. Hmm. And I think, it's, I think it's done by Daniel Warren Johnson, if hmm. I'm not mistaken. Who is? is it, yeah, love thing? love him. Yeah, he's incredible. Is it an Elseworld story or is it? Yeah, it's an Elseworld continuity? story. Oh, okay, cool. Interesting. Kind of sounds. All like of the good ones Batman are. <laughs> What's that? All all the good stories are Elseworld stories. I shouldn't say that. Yeah. A <laughs> lot a lot of them are. Good lord. Dark Knight. Well, Dark Knight Returns is probably considered an Elseworld story at this point. Oh yeah. Actually, do you guys know about how that started? Do you know about the? Do you know that before dark? Do you know about before dark? dark blah, blah, blah. Wow, Dark Knight Returns. Their Frank Miller and Steve Gerber wrote out a proposal where they were going to revamp all three of those characters, Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, um, into the mainstream continuity, uh, and they were going to start over Wonder Woman and call it Amazon, and. Hmm. DC DC turned it all down. They're going to do Dark Knight, Amazon, and Man of Steel. DC turned it down, so he ended up taking those notes and turning it into The Dark Knight Returns. <clears throat> but, man, can you imagine if we'd gotten an Amazon from Frank Miller? I mean, pre-Dark pre Knight? Ugh. Kills me. Yeah, I don't even really know how he would tackle that character outside of the Dark Knight universe if it would be that same take. Uh, I think he's always wanted to. I which I don't know. mind. I love the costume a lot. Oh, yeah. Well, you mean, what? which one? You mean Frank's take on it? Or the... Yeah. Costume? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Seems to me like he was the guy that really played up the Greek aspect. I feel like Frank... I feel like Wonder Wo his take on Elektra and Wonder Woman have some sort of continuity, have something in, I think if there's some, I think if he did Wonder Woman, there would be some element of Elektra in it. <clears throat> Not sure why I say that, but I just, I, my gut says that. I think that's evident um, for sure in his Daredevil run. Like I think, yeah. his, and even in the Dark Knight, the way that Wonder Woman is presented, um, yeah. that universe, I think that that's a, a very yeah. clear statement that he has an idea of what to use the term again, um, 
what that strong female character would be in terms of right. his morality and his um, viewpoints on what a warrior who happens to be a woman would be. Right. And I think those are both authentic takes on those characters. Like, I don't think yeah. either of them are um, derogative or um, peddling any kind of anti-feminist agenda. Like, they're not pandering in any way. They're very much like, based off what they have been through, very real people, those two characters. You're talking about Wonder Woman and, and who, Batman? Uh, no, Elektra. Oh, Elektra and Daredevil. Well, uh, uh, no, Elektra and Wonder Woman, comparing how oh, uh, yeah, those got two it, got approaches it. to those two characters. Yeah. Well, he, he made Elektra Greek, and I would assume that he would have played up Wonder Woman's Greek roots, and I kind of have always felt like there was something similar going on there, that he was he was like, you know, I want to do a Greek character. Oh, I'm going to do this female Daredevil character. Maybe I should make her Greek. That would work. But it's anyways, I spent a lot of time wondering what the hell Frank Miller was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> yeah yes we have <laughs> so um, that's actually a, a great conversation lead into these redesigns mm -hmm. that we're doing um yeah and anybody feel free to to chime in with what inspired your take on this character but when it came to this redesign uh i know nate and i had a similar approach um but to you guys what would you do with this character who as we've pointed out is almost like a blank canvas to some extent she's a well-known yeah. character but there's also never been um a universally celebrated take on her like her origins have changed several times um, her lineage has changed her power sets have changed uh, to you guys or for you guys what would be your take on this character in your redesigns that you're attempting are you talking about visually or or story-wise uh, both actually, because I, I think yeah. that plays into how you're at least visually approaching the character. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing I left off this character that I just can't figure out a way to put in it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do it. And that's her tiara. Um, I, I just don't think that t the tiara works. And, uh, and yet it's such an iconic part of her. I feel really weird about that. So I gave her. Well, uh, I've done a, a tiara star right star now. Earrings. What's that? I I I'm a real. I know very little about Wonder Woman. Um, I've gone with yeah. the tiara. I basically went back to the Linda yeah. Carter design. Any time I had like a something I wasn't sure about. Yeah. Um, what it's meant is that there's no like W's on any of my design except for the mm -hmm. war paint that I've put on after. Um. Mm -hmm. But I went with the tiara. I think this was maybe done in the movie for one of the characters, maybe that wasn't Wonder Woman. But I like brought it round also to like the cheeks into a little more of a helmet kind of thing. Right. I don't know if you can see that there. She like it comes around there. Mm, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I like that. Yeah, there's a funny yeah. thing about Wonder Woman that, uh, and Mike, you, you said this a little bit in the intro that it's somewhat of a i don't want to say blank canvas but it's not untouchable like uh like i would consider superman's classic suit is uh, is pretty untouchable spider-man's costume is yeah. untouchable there's yeah. a lot that you can do with wonder yeah. woman's costume yeah yeah uh and it still reads even as like the original classic yeah. suit like i was looking at a lot of designs leading into this episode and I was really taken with how kind of weird Alex Toth's Wonder Woman is for Super Friends and, and for some of the other illustrations and comics that he did compared mm. to what I would consider to be the classic Wonder Woman suit. He changes the shape of this this bird um, breastplate thing pretty pretty drastically. And I had never even noticed. And I've seen probably every episode of Super Friends. I'd never even noticed that he changed it. Uh, it over, over the course of time in other words it started out one way and then became something different later well like what i would consider to be and, and maybe it's because my age is sort of like the quintessential wonder woman suit is is i i can't even give a an exact example but maybe something like what you see in like the justice league cartoon where it's yeah, like yeah. pretty pretty slim it does form like a w but there's still maybe a little bit of a burden there 
Uh, yeah, the eagle thing. But yeah, Alex Toast is is pretty different. And I looked at a bunch of different. I looked at some uh, Matteo Scalera drawings of Wonder yeah. Woman, and uh, his is his. At least the ones that I saw were pretty Frank Miller esque. Um, who mm-hmm. also played around with some of those shapes a lot. It seems like every artist plays around with the details quite a bit, but it still reads as the same costume somehow. Whereas yeah. if you did those same things with Batman, Superman, The Flash, or, or over at Marvel, you know, like Spider-Man or something, uh, people would probably get upset that you changed them. I know I would uh, with with uh, some of those things because yeah. they're they're more untouchable. And Wonder Woman, for some reason, does not have does not have that going on with her costume. There's there's a lot you can play around with while still having it be the same essential yeah. design. Yeah. Well, did you know actually? Did you know that Alex Toth's original design for Wonder Woman was based on the '40s version of her with like the 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 more like curly bobbed hair. And they made him change it, and I don't. Oh know. yeah, like that was way before the Linda Carter show, but I know they made him change it to the more traditional looking that we're all version that we're all familiar with. Yeah, a little so, more period friendly to the to the seventies or whatever. Yeah, they made him tone down a number of his um, uh, designs. I think Superman got toned way down a bit too. Yeah, that's a Toth actually plays with uh, the shape of Superman's boots in a lot of his drawings, and uh, I love Toth and I love his Superman, but I'm like, that's not what Superman's boots look like. There's two <laughs> arches at the top, Toth. You got it wrong, and I'm sure it was a choice on his part, but I disagree, Alex Toth. <laughs> well, to be, I'd have to see it. To be fair, it, in, in animation, they got to simplify things because otherwise the animators will shoot you. Like, well, I think in the show they got it. Quote unquote, but, right. Yeah. Uh, it passes for me in the show, but a lot of his just drawings that he's done of the character in some oh, of the comics. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. And maybe not in the comics. That might be something that an editor looked at and was like, nope, that's not what they look like. Because <laughs> there's yeah. an editor like me out there. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Love, you, love Alex Toth, by the way. I'm just, I feel like I've been kind of ragging on him. He's, he's, he's amazing. <laughs> he's a, he'll be okay. I'm, yeah, I'm sure he'll be fine. <laughs> Todd, what inspired your Wonder Woman costume? Because it is absolutely very um, period specific to some extent. It, it, it wears its well, clothes on its sleeve a bit. It is and it isn't. Um, so I think Linda Carter, obviously. But but for me, like the the first thing I so for me, like there's certain things you have to. So like if you're gonna do Batman, there's certain things you have to do, or it's not Batman, and that means like the the profile with the bat ears and kind of the shoulders. But y- you know that shadow that Batman makes, or Indiana Jones makes a, sh- a shadow that's iconic. Anything else you can kind of play around with with Batman, but if you don't have that, it probably turns into something that's not Batman. So. For me, whenever I think about Wonder Woman, I'm like, what do you have to have? And it seems to me there has to be stars. There has to be some sort of boots that are probably going to be red. And for me, the higher, the better, uh, as far as most women's superhero outfits, but Wonder Woman's in particular. Um, The eagle chest crest thing to me is problematic not from a a, say like political point of view but just the 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 um tightrope you have to walk when designing female superheroes in my opinion is functionality versus looking good and like like a lot of like let's say you're a female cop you're in the military from a distance you can't really tell the difference between a male and a female cop or military person and that's because it's purely, you know, functional. And that's that's probably in reality, if superheroes actually existed, they would probably be very, they wouldn't have their hair down and they wouldn't be wearing high heels. And you know, there's all kinds of things. But I do feel like you can kind of compromise uh, to a certain extent. Um, um, but for so for me, that chest plate just seems like like too much going on. Um, and it's presented so many different ways. Like, I feel like 
Wonder Woman's got a lot of opportunities for racing stripes. So that's kind of what I was going for, is trying to figure out race, ways to introduce racing stripes into her costume. Um, and the other is she's got a basic red, white, and blue thing going on, but with the addition, of course, of gold. Um, so I feel like if you have all those elements... Uh, oh, and her um, uh, bulletproof bracelets which uh now i think about it i'm that's been in the back of my mind i'm like i gotta get those bracelets in there or something um but i think you can play around with that kind of stuff if you want you can you can i mean for me like i was trying to figure out if i should put like a uh, armor plating all the way up both of her arms and just like why why just bracelets um but with the the tiara, I think is debatable. I grew up in the '90s um, yeah. with all of the like animated series action figures, yeah. and honestly, it was rare to find. Um, okay, uh, it was rare to find uh, a toy that was just Batman or Superman's um, or Spider Man. Find them in their regular costume. They were all like these. Arctic oh, Adventure yeah. Batman, or uh, yeah. uh, I have like a you know a Superman that's like a scuba Superman. I think that was like one of the first Superman toys I got, and yeah. I really just wanted one in his regular suit. But because of yeah. of my experience <laughs> playing with those toys, I'm like I love the alternate suits for, yeah. for all of these characters. I love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was actually thinking of that a lot when I was doing that when I was trying to incorporate fish for the mm -hmm. October thing. I was like, yeah. well, I have, you know, a bit of fun, like, trying to make one of those 90s, like, because I had the same thing of, like, all of the toys. None of them were the originals. Yeah. It was all, like, Batman, but, like, bright gold for some reason. Right, <laughs> yeah. He has, like, a, he has, like, a rocket launcher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always, always with stuff like that. And so I was, like, I was, like, halfway through drawing it, and I was, like, this just feels like that, but a lot worse with less imagination. <laughs> and, yeah. uh. Yeah, it just didn't feel right, and I started having a hankering to actually just draw Wonder Woman looking a bit more like Wonder Woman, since I don't yeah. really draw the character that much. So, so what did you? So, Johnny, what did you look up when you said, "Okay, I want to do this more traditional," or did you? Like, did you then Google Wonder Woman, or? Uh, I started googling a little bit of Greek armor, and but only a tiny bit. I found myself a lot of the time just making it up as I went along. Um, yeah. Or, like I said, whenever I had an issue, going back to like the Linda Carter one. So, you were talking about that eagle breastplate thing. I've kind of yeah. put that on there here. Um, and a lot of it was like, I have to confess, a lot of it was like me thinking, having Greek in my mind, but not actually reading, like doing much research on it because I was just, I just started having fun with the piece. So, yeah. there's like a, one part of it I've, it I've started doing here. You mentioned like just gauntlets all the way up which I've done that all the way up to her elbow. And then yeah. underneath that, I've got like, uh, like under wrapping under all of it, like bandagey stuff that goes up past the elbow. That mm. I'm kind of, that's right there. And that seemed, <laughs> that seemed Greek to me. I was like, that seems kind of in that right ballpark. I didn't yeah. really uh, look into it at all, but I, I liked the way it looked, so I kind of kept it up. Oh, and I gave yeah. her a short underneath her, uh, underneath her like, yeah. What do you call it? What's the name for like the belt that then goes then goes down into like tassels that she sometimes has? Like a skirt. I gave it like real. Green. Yeah, well, kind of like a mean, like an like armored Darwin's skirt, history, right? Yeah. Well, I kind of made the tassels a lot thinner because that yeah. seemed Greek to me, and yeah. then I I actually incorporated shorts underneath. I don't know how people are going to feel about that. I did the oh. same thing. I used shorts. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like the way it looks. Well, I and it's a little bit more. Oh, what were you going to say, Johnny? I was just going to say, I feel like every female superhero character I've seen, like Supergirl is a big one, where they like, with Supergirl, they just basically took Superman's costume and then just right. cut off the pants, like <laughs> right at yeah. the, well, the underpants for, for Americans. Like they just cut it off right there. And just got rid of the legs and I'm like they do that with like so many female superheroes are like they just don't have any legs going on they just have pants and yeah. like, it always kind of annoys me a little bit so I, I gave her shorts 
Because if you've got like a skirt going around and you're, you're running about doing Wonder Woman stuff, that's just not very yeah. practical. <laughs> well, yeah, your skirt's going to come up. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's just not <laughs> what they're going to do, is it? <laughs> yeah, I was approaching the same thing with the shorts because in my mind I was thinking about um, like athletic wear nowadays. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, That'd even good... though my Wonder Woman isn't a um she's not really she she's supposed to look very um ancient Greek or ancient Roman in yeah. design. Um I thought that was an important element to include just because I think it visually articulates because of how our modern fashion senses are, athleticism in yeah. a way that's not um like sexualizing the character. I think it like right. very yeah. much makes me think of like Olympic track runners or um, track and field for that matter. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Are very common for female athletics. So I think that's like an instant, like iconographic piece of clothing that you can use to articulate something about the character. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of what I was feeling while I was drawing it. And um, I also, uh, I think we are both in the right ballpark as well because um, not that this is a, uh, historically accurate at all but i was playing a little bit of uh that assassin's creed odyssey a while ago and that is all like super greek so i was kind of thinking about oh, that wow. as well while i was working a little bit that was in my mind and they have a lot of that like that like shorts underneath kind of thing but yeah. you know the olden times kind of version of it right And that's kind of the direction they've gone in the movies, haven't they? I'm not as... Yeah. Oh, yeah, they did do that in the Wonder Woman movie. I think so. That was another thing I kind of felt like I was doing a lot of the time with this, was like in redesigning it, a lot of the time I felt like I was just doing... It, I was like, this just looks like the movie. <laughs> I think I'm not... They, they've already redesigned it. Like, <laughs> hmm. That was one of the issues I was coming across, I think. Yeah, I think so much of what I would do with the character has kind of been done before visually. Um, yeah, and so I, I've taken a lot of the looks for her that I like and sort of like meshed them all together to make this yeah. one that I'm actually enjoying a little more than I thought I would. Yeah, same. But it's, it's funny that I think a lot of modern artists have tackled Wonder Woman's costume uh, with mm -hmm. the same mentality of including more gladiatorial slash Spartan type armor elements to the design. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, but I don't think they've ever strayed too far from her classic look, you know, like the color placement is always in yeah. the exact same spots. Like even if she yeah. has a, a skirt, like kind of like the way you, uh, you're illustrating it right now, Nate, um, with like the tassel almost mm -hmm. to it. Um, it's almost always blue with maybe like a white or gold element to it to kind of oh yeah yeah if if I colored this it it absolutely would be um and I'm playing or i'm I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna put some stars on these little leather tassel things or if I'm gonna put them up here in this belt uh that I have going on. I'm not sure I'm kind of mm. doing a little bit of the designing on the fly here, so I might make some choices that I'm not super happy with. Uh, also, this character right here that's like lassoed and tied up, I have no idea who this is going to end up being. Right now, I'm thinking uh, Steve Trevor, <laughs> but I thought that might be a little boring, so yeah, I might I might change it halfway through, so I should probably stop inking Wonder Woman in case I need to make a larger character. But... <laughs> big, put, put a big smile on his face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, the lasso was something I hadn't even thought about with my design. Um, oh, you got that lasso. Yeah, well, it's kind of like how you were talking about, Todd. Like, what yeah. iconography, like, needs to be translated for it still to be Wonder Woman? And to yeah. me, that was things like um, the eagle breastplate, which I articulated as um, a shoulder pad, like a big eagle head shield or guard on her uh, left shoulder. And the gauntlets, yeah. of course um some kind of uh w motif somewhere within the design um 
but the lasso is something I totally neglected, which is crazy because that's <laughs> her main tool of choice in fighting crime. I just gave her a short sword. <laughs> yeah, I've, I'm. She should I'm, definitely have a sword, though. Yeah, or at least at times, you know, or an axe or something. There's all kinds of great weapons opportunities for her. Yeah. Yeah, that's so much yeah, of like modern Wonder out. Woman is the sword. Yeah. The, 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 to be fair, I could I understand forgetting the lasso though. It's kind of like you know you don't you don't draw Batman holding batarangs every time he's right. You know, yeah, that's and true. yet it's it's a totally iconic part of the character at this point. Um, but yeah, like the lasso's got to. I think there's actually a lot of potential for the lasso that, to, that I'll have to. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but I, I think there's a lot of potential that hasn't been tapped uh, for what that lasso can be or do. Um, you know, is it magical? Is it well? Obviously, it's magical, but like, does it have to be wound up on her hip the whole time, or can it? Can she shoot it like Spider Man, or you know, like, you can do some fun things with that. In theory, maybe that's what her breastplate is. You know, I don't know. Her and her invisible jet too. That's that's the that's the problematic one, right? The invisible jet. Uh, Is it? Uh, yeah, a little bit for me, like from a storytelling point of view. Yeah, you know, because you can go real goofy with it, or you can find a practical way to approach it. But then, are you losing some of the fun of it if you make it too practical? Yeah. Well, what's not practical in your mind about it? Just like the point of having well. It? I, I just think it's so goofy and like the Super Friends, for instance, and I love Super Friends, you know, where you can like see them in the jet and they're not oh, cloaked right. at all. <laughs> and they, it's just them. It's just them seated flying through the air and they all they're all like wearing seatbelts. Uh, and I love that. It's super fun. But I'm like, they they're in the jet. They should be invisible, too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the explanation for it is funky. I'd have to like for I my problem with that is that she, I don't understand why she's can fly like Superman. Um, I actually, if I was doing Wonder Woman off the top of my head, I'd say I'd take her flying power away. That so that there's a, the jet has a purpose, and it has to be invisible because otherwise she can, you know people could be like, oh, Wonder Woman must be here. There's her jet. Hey, let's go get into it or whatever. But, you know, for her to get around, she's always got this jet thing or something. Um, I did not realize she could fly. I thought she could, like, jump really high. Oh, yeah, no, she can fly. Actually, one of the early intros of the Super Friends, that, like, one of the main shots is Superman, Wonder Woman, and Aquaman flying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the yeah. <laughs> that was like, wait, hey, what? There are flying fish. There are flying fish. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys have any like, specific story elements that um, you would incorporate into your design so like for mine for example I, mm -hmm. I talked about a little bit that I wanted to capture almost a uh, statue come to life feel um, mm -hmm. and my take on Wonder Woman just to spitball it is that she is actually entombed in stone except when the world needs her so she's like a 15 to 20 oh. foot tall Gre greco roman oh. statue that comes to life huh. when there is That's um injustice in the world yeah well so there's no um uh secret identity then in other uh, words yeah i wouldn't do the secret identity but i would have <laughs> her be able to shrink because magic um <laughs> so she would be able to oh, shrink down and hang out with steve trevor and other people but when she wanted yeah. to be wonder woman she would have to be this monolithic um, yeah, figure of of freedom and liberation. Justice. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. actually her, her shrinking and growing is a great power for her to have. That would be like a big monumental giant Wonder Woman that can battle King Kong or whatever. Godzilla would be pretty neat. Well, even I isn't one of her main second. villains Giganta? If I'm not mistaken, isn't that a you know? Villain? That's a good question. Is she, is she? I actually not. I actually thought maybe Giganta was a Flash villain, but I really don't know. She oh, I should don't think be. So. Hmm. Really. We got to do a she Giganta episode. We need to deep dive and study Giganta. We got to learn more yeah. about Giganta. Clearly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for it. 
There's but a yeah. great Justice League episode with Giganta. So there's a, uh, yeah. Do you guys have any story elements though that um, you would incorporate into this Wonder Woman redesign, kind of the way I just touched upon? Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't think I know enough about the character anyway. <laughs> Like, I don't know how <laughs> Greek they lean or, like, I don't know. Let me, let me, ask, let me ask this, because I don't know. Let's see if you guys know more about what's going on currently. So do you guys know that the the premise of Wonder Woman is that her mother made her out of clay mm -hmm. for some reason? Uh, yeah, well, it um, used to be, right? I, I don't think it is anymore. I, well, I don't know. It that was always odd to me. I didn't quite understand that. Was it was that indicative that her mother couldn't have children or what was going on there? But so on the Justice League, like I don't know how I would incorporate this visually into the drawing I'm doing right now, but I know on the Justice League cartoon there was one episode that was kind of one of those blink and you miss it, but it was where she was fighting Ares, the god of war. And towards Aries keeps saying has kind of this funny attitude towards her and keeps saying strange things. And then at the end, you start realizing that she's starting to figure out maybe that her mother made that story up about making her out of clay because she didn't want her to know that Aries is actually her father. Her father is the god. Oh, of yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that did they is that did they ever incorporate that into the comics? Because I think that's a great premise. Well, in, in at least the current continuity, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. she's actually the daughter of Zeus. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, oh. but Todd, that episode was actually a direct influence on my take because I was thinking about that oh, right. and her being the daughter of Ares. And yeah. I think for me, like that's something that I would incorporate into Wonder Woman is that she is part of the Greek pantheon. Yeah. And so for me, like well, when I was yeah. approaching this take, I was like my thought would be that she would have been the daughter of the God of war, but she's yeah. this goddess of liberation and freedom, which yeah. does go hand in hand with some wars, but is also in some way an antithesis because yeah. war can be oppressive and um, destructive. And so that was kind of something I had in mind when putting this um, like Spartan type helmet on her, which is very Aries inspired and giving her the sword. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, she needs, a, I mean, I think any great character needs a flaw. And that, and to me, that's maybe my problem with the, with the idea of a strong female superhero is in a way, there's a, sort of a subtle implication that the character can have flaws, which I think is going to lead to a boring character that never, like, if you're perfect, then you're not going to progress and grow during a story. And that's why we read stories about interesting character, like every single interesting character in the history of civilization has been interesting because of what they've learned and, and how they've grown um, other than Seinfeld, because that's, what's funny about the characters is they should learn, but they don't. And that's why it's <laughs> hilarious, but it's still like a play on that basic concept. And to me, like having her have this conflict of, among other things, that she's got this evil father that she's inherently got a conflict with, uh, you know, I'd love. And it makes more sense of like, OK, I always thought that story about you making me out of clay was a bunch of baloney, mom. Why did you know when when were you going to tell me the truth uh, brings her in a conflict with her mom and. Um, I think there's just, you know, if they didn't incorporate that into the, the comics, that's unfortunate because I think that was that was a good idea. They should have done that. Todd, you bringing up um, strong female characters and then not having yeah. flaws is, um, I think that's yeah. a good point. But also something, while you were talking about that, uh, I oh. started like thinking of other characters in the same kind of area that we're talking about. And um, yeah. maybe Nate can help here. But in uh, terms of that, what flaws does like Superman have? He's naive. Uh, yeah, yeah, that I would say that that's that's a main guy. one. I think, uh. I think Batman, <laughs> Batman's angry. Uh, yeah, I mean Batman's a psychopath. You know, he's he's, he's Spider, a Spider Man. Spider Man is guilty. His whole motivation, Spider Man's whole motivation, is his guilt towards his, you know, his uncle's death. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I could don't... definitely think of a lot of other characters, and I think it's just that I don't know a lot about Superman, but I was like, huh, wh yeah. what about Superman? What's his, where's his flaw? Because from what I see, 
yeah. like as a bit of an outsider, he yeah. doesn't have any. Like, yeah, that's I'd... maybe why I've well... never been that drawn to him. I don't like the uh, the take on Superman where they really play up where he's like angsty about being an alien. Um, I think mm. that's something that maybe like in his younger years he would struggle with. But by the time you see him as Superman, he's he's accepted that he knows that he is this super powered being and he understands sort of the responsibility that he might hold. But yeah, like yeah. Todd said, he's he's hopeful to a fault. Um, he'll give right. everyone a second chance no matter what, you know, super villains, whatever. Yeah. Um, well, and yeah, that's, that's, that's sort of a fault. Batman's cynical. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Batman's cynical and Superman's, and he's naive, why, he's hopeful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why Wonder Woman can be brought in to make peace between the two. She's like, well, there's a little bit of both going on here, but you're both wrong. You're both right. But I, for me, like with Superman, I, what I love about the original Christopher Reeve movie is how dorky Superman is other than when he's being Superman to me it, his flaws are emotional like he doesn't really know how to fit in he knows you can make himself fit in the, through coercion and power but he knows that's wrong and he would never do that but like for me like when I saw him in other cartoons like the as much as i love the animated superman cartoon he was like a jock and he was on the football team and i was like what what are you doing what are you not on the <laughs> football team he would never do that and that like maybe arguably my favorite scene in that whole movie is when he that one minute he decides to cut loose and run home and he mm. beats all the beats all the kids home, and they're like, "How'd you get here so fast?" And he's like, "I ran," but his father catches him. So yeah, and that's a like, lesson for him. And he's yeah, like, he's "Oh, like, yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know, I shouldn't have done that. that." Yeah, and I, I love that scene because he's like, "You're here for a reason. I don't know what it is, but it's not to score touchdowns." And uh, yeah, that that scene really raised the hair on the back of my neck when I was a kid because it meant something. I mean, I oh yeah, dude that that scene makes me cry. That scene makes me cry yeah. every time. Doesn't it? Oh man! And then his father dies. You know. Yeah, it's uh, uh Spoilers. He gives he gives that speech. <laughs> yeah, yeah actually, he gives that true. speech he at the. Uh, that was yeah. He gives that like speech so at the black. funeral where he says, you know, and he sort of has to reconcile like. Yeah. I have. Uh, I can do lot. all of these things, and I I couldn't. You know, it, like how how fair is it that I that I even have all of these powers if I can't do anything to protect someone from, yeah. you know, a bad heart? He had a heart attack. That's yeah. You know, again, just a lesson he has to learn. Well, I think that's something that the Wonder Woman movie actually covers really well in terms of tying it back to the what's her flaw, like what is the thing yeah. that defines her as a a, a person? Um, yeah, is, is her ignorance towards what humans do and why like we're so selfish yeah. and we cause yeah. and whatnot. And I think that movie really um, gives a perspective of this outsider who in that same way to Superman kind of like reconciling with like um, kind of like, I think Todd brought it up of uh, Jonathan Kent saying you were here for a reason. And it wasn't for football. Um, yeah. Like same thing with wonder woman. I think her optimism and her um, aspirations for peace um, are what make her a person, especially yeah. in the movie. Like that, like that's what defines her as a character. Is that she's fighting not because she wants conflict and she wants war, but because she wants the opposite. She wants to end it. She wants to conclude all of the chaos that's ensuing because of World War One. Yeah. Mm. Can can we just talk about in that movie how great it would have been? And I and I enjoy the Wonder Woman movie. Was um, I agree entirely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that that and this. <laughs> um, don't don't even have don't make Ares the villain. Don't have Ares in the movie. He shouldn't be real, really, in the story because she she goes on this whole crusade to defeat Ares to end World War One. The lesson should be that no men can be bad and good, and that's why war is happening. Uh, it's not. Yeah, well, I, it's not masterminded by, uh, you know, your yeah. your Greek god colleague. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, did you think that was the way it was going? Because I did when I was watching it. They kind of touch on it. There's like a bit. Yeah. Where she kind of comes to terms. So she starts to realize that it, like war is just happening and humans just. I thought that was the purpose of uh, Steve Trevor in the movie was to teach her, like, yeah. this is this is how we are. We're not good. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was going to be it. I thought it was going to be, you're right, that he, like, Ares isn't actually real. And she has to realize, like, oh, my God, like, this crusade I've been on, this battle that I've been fighting is not even what I thought that it was. There's not going to be an end to it after I beat this guy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Yeah. Other than that, the movie was solid. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd be really curious to see the the sequel. I hope it's good. I hope really mm-hmm. it comes out. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I wasn't going to even say it, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that goes without saying. Yeah. Yeah, like every superhero story to me boils down to what it means to do the right thing. And I think that that's, you know, the, the superheroes are good because they do the right thing or or hopefully and Su- superman is i think his father is really saying he's reminding him that you're still making a choice you don't al- always just automatically do the right thing you always have the choice to make and do the right thing and that's what i'm expecting from you or what i hope I'm, i've taught you yeah and that's that's why i think like superman and wonder woman are so similar uh and at they least are, that aspect yeah. i don't think they should be similar in, in every way she shouldn't be just a female version well, uh, but yeah, she she does make the choice to leave Paradise Island, yeah, and rejoin the world yeah. to make a difference, and that's that's a that's really nice. That's really beautiful. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a great point. Is that a lot of takes on Wonder Woman, at least in my exposure to her, have been oh she's like the female Superman. She's this optimistic beacon of hope mm. and optimism, but you just touched upon a really great point of the choice is that Superman doesn't have the choice to be on this planet. Oh yeah. He was Whereas just subjected she, she to it. Yeah, that's true. I hadn't thought about that. Right. Hmm. Right. And, and he could probably just live, uh, live a normal life. If he wanted to, he could play in the NFL if he wanted to, you of know, course. he could do so yeah. many different things, but he's like, you know what? I can do these things. And yeah. uh yeah, and Wonder Woman is in is in a pretty similar boat where she's like, I I can sort of do you know, use the gifts that I have to help a world that I am not at all a part of. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where that's where I the two differ is that she makes the choice to even go into the world of man. Yeah. Yeah, well, and on that, I thought the um a, a really good part in comics that uh, highlights like the difference between the two of them is their scene in uh, New Frontier. Yes. Oh, with really the uh, there's the door, Flyboy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That bit's the shit. She's so cool. Yeah, in that. yeah that was that was the first time I was like, oh, Wonder Woman's fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, it's there's the door, Spaceman, right? Yeah, I think she says Spaceman. Yeah. Yeah, and we, Man, we, that's cool. we talked about that too, about how like in that scene, or we talked about it in our chat, about how that scene is like Wonder Woman is towering over Superman. Oh, yeah. So she's she's yeah. Just, like, behemoth yeah, she's like, of, of she's like 6'9 yeah. or something. She's huge. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And unlike Superman, it makes sense to me that she would be in the military as a civilian. Like when she it, on the Wonder Woman T the Wonder Wonder Woman TV show is real all over the place because when I think it started out it started out in the forties and then they were like uh, oh, yeah. we need to update this is too expensive and so they just went to modern day and didn't explain anything but her ru- walking around in that um, you know cap and military uh, skirt and, and suit was always it seemed perfectly appropriate for. Her. Todd, that's a, a really cool point about the um, secret identity aspect to the character, because kind of like in my reimagining, she's just a like a Greek god. Yeah, that's um, very different. But but I think there's a value in what you're talking about with her being a a military woman specifically in that show, in terms of like yeah. the time period, um, 
women's like <laughs> rights and um, not that yeah. women weren't celebrated or anything beforehand, but the fact that in that period of time, like normalizing women right. in the military or normalizing women in high paying positions was, you know, pretty groundbreaking. Oh, it totally was. It, it, we never went back, you know? Yeah. I mean, my grandmother, my grandmother talk about it, how, you know, she suddenly <laughs> had to go work. All the women did. Suddenly all those factories that used to be filled by men were filled by women because the men were all at war. Um, I don't, I don't know how long it was before women could join the military. Um, exactly. But yeah, that, that has to be one of the, one of the primary influences for Wonder Woman was all those women suddenly getting thrust into, um, different societal roles and whatnot and having freedoms that it was just the beginning of things like that. Um, and I know Wonder Woman had a went went to a white jumpsuit at one point in the late sixties or early seventies before. The yeah, the uh, the Denny O'Neill run. The Kung yeah. Fu era, right? Was it Kung yeah. Fu era? Karate and <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, God bless him, but he is he has owned up that that was a horrible mistake. Yeah. Since then. Yeah. Well, bless him for trying, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 behind some of the great revamps of characters that were successful, and and behind some that that flopped. But you know, you won't know until you try. To me, it's a to me it's a great example of going too far afield and throwing the baby out with the bathwater, as opposed to him and Neil Adams' Batman revamp was bringing the character closer to what it originally started out as, mm-hmm. which is what I, I think should always be done. I think it should be like pruning a tree. You've got this basic concept, and any time it gets overgrown, you got to kind of prune things back and get back to the what it, the character really is about. But the stronger the sense of what the character is about, the easier or whatever that's going to end up being. Whereas with Wonder Woman, it's like you got to figure out what she's about exactly. Yeah, absolutely. She's so a she's a, she's a weird one, you know. Because well, here's here's a question I have for you guys: Who is Wonder Woman's arch enemy? Because before you guys say it, I wonder if we all have different answers, and I think that's a fundamental flaw of Wonder Woman's. Yeah, the way she's been presented. Yeah. Because nobody okay. here would probably, if we said who's Batman or Superman's or even Spider Man's, we'd all go Lex Luthor, Green Goblin, Joker. You know. Yeah. But with Wonder Woman, I don't know. I, I think they're trying to make it the cheetah, but I think we could all. I was just going to gonna say, yeah, that was going to be my call. Yeah. Knowing but, not very much about the character, I thought it was that. I thought it was the cheetah. Is it wrong to say the patriarchy? Hmm. <laughs> which i yes. say is a joke but actually like <laughs> legitimately is that her main thing that as a like the lead female superhero of um one of the two major superhero publishers um i almost feel like that is one of her major supervillains is fighting against what um was stereotypically considered a woman's place and showcasing that um in the modern era uh, yeah. it's not suitable. It's not okay to address women or treat women in the way that they were even a century yeah. ago. Yeah. And I think she's constantly changing to address that. Like Wonder Woman of, of now, of yeah. 2010s slash 2020s, is a different Wonder Woman than the 2000s versus the 90s versus the 80s Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's almost constantly changing to address um woman women's suffrage in that way which might actually lend itself to why i don't think there might be a definitive take on the character because that Could struggle be. is something that's continually changing and evolving through yep. time that um yeah. it's hard to just nail one universal take on the character in the way that you have with superman or batman yeah well i think mike that's a really interesting answer because i think like that's a really cool idea in terms of like being progressive and things like that. And I think you've got to like find a balance because as you were saying that, I was thinking, yeah, that's that's really cool. And at the same time, like when I read comics, a lot of the time I just want like the general like escapism of like Batman fighting 
like Joker and things like that and like fun stories. So I think you've got to draw the line and give her like a concrete nemesis, something to actually like, mm -hmm. I don't know, for want of a better word, be entertainingly fighting against, but at the same time have themes of like the character being progressive and fighting the patriarchy. I think it's, I think it's an interesting line you've got to draw mm -hmm. to keep the character entertaining to read. Yeah. You gotta have a good writer, right? And if you're a cartoonist, it's literally the line you have to draw. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We get we got jokes, folks. <laughs> well, art what's what's the saying? Art like morality means a line being drawn somewhere. <laughs> oh, I've never heard that. That's great. I love that. I wanna say that's Oscar Wilde, but I'm not positive. Seems like something he would say though. See, I, I actually see that <laughs> now. I'm I'm going to dissent from that because I think I think that the my problem with that take is that there's something fundamentally wrong with man's world, and I I disagree with that. Um, I in fact I think I don't I don't know if this has been the premise, but it seems to me like her whole why she's on an island cut off from men is because of there's been some sort of fundamental rejection of man's world or whatever and so for her leaving that island she has to have some sort of acceptance of man's world where she, i think she has to like it as well as wanting to change it and in a way like she has to want to change the attitudes of the outside world as much as she has to change the attitudes maybe of the people that she lives with on the island of like hey you know maybe uh there's some cool like to me, like I think that women should have the same access to cool things that that men traditionally have had, for instance. And you know, I, I see Wonder Woman as someone who's very, a woman who's very comfortable under the hood of a car with other men. And I, I, I and I think that she's um, trying to figure out where she fits in in that sense. And I think that's not at all the traditional take that's usually done on the character, though. I love that that comment about the like under the hood, um, yeah, confidence because I think that is really where the character has thrived and why it, she's been such a lasting figure in pop culture. Is that yeah. she? is defined by her skills and her knowledge and her wisdom and yeah. her characteristics as opposed to anything surface level. Which is very masculine, yeah. As a, Yeah, she's not defined by um, her strength, typically, in that yeah. way. That she's like, oh, well, yeah. um, she's only the brute of this team. Like, she's superior in strength to, like, Batman or, you know, half the men on the Justice League. And that's not what sure. defines her as a superhero. Like, it's not like she's the member of the team that goes underwater like Aquaman or goes into space like right. the Lantern. Like, she serves a different purpose, and that is not defined by just a physical thing about her. Yeah. It seems like she would bristle against that, um, you know, being defined or whatever. Yeah. We got to refill my fountain pen. Oh no! I should probably not do this over the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> About to make me some mistakes, guys. It's already bubbling. That's cool. Last week was my turn. This week's Nate's turn. Ah! I'm getting ink all over my hands. Yeah, there's a lady. There's a lady who was a adventure writer, and she traveled the world, and she flew an airplane, and she she wrote books. And Hemingway was a big fan of hers. But I and I remember I was like, man, I've never heard of this lady before. And of course, I'm blanking on her name. I'd have to think about it for a second. Um, but the the way she was described, I remember thinking to myself, that's a lady who's decided to go into man's world and do man things, and she's not gonna be told you know I, I i think it was i think she was she felt comfortable there and accepted in a way where i think that as opposed to like i think i think women can put as much pressure on other women to be womanly or 
like things that girls are expected to like as as perhaps men can maybe even more so i don't know um but you know for a woman to step outside of that she's going to potentially find opposition on all sides um she she Wonder Woman strikes me as somebody who's into fairness. Like I keep seeing I keep seeing like the Statue of Liberty and that uh the justice is blind holding the scales of justice, like a person that, that believes in fair play. Yeah, I think in the Wonder Woman movie at the end where she's standing on the statue um, yeah. really captures that too. That that yeah visual connection between her as a character and this visual icon of justice and um, democracy and yeah yeah definitely she she's not american but she strikes me as somebody like you know if she was that naive she potentially could have gone to the germans and become a nazi but she's not she's got an inherent sense of right and wrong and so from a story point of view, she'd think that she'd, she'd be naturally drawn towards the United States, hopefully. And as someone who's not American, it kind of represents the American concept of coming to America to embedder your family's future and your own prospects. Oh, yeah. So I think there's something a, to say about that as well. Yeah. As a migrant, as a, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. She, oh, she chooses to come to America. And she does, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. I don't know, Johnny. Should she have been? Uh, should she have been British? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Make, make well, for the UK, Johnny. <laughs> that would be an interesting one. I'd imagine if American people were writing her going to Britain, that would be that would be fun to read. I think there would be a lot of of like, "Core, blimey, come and have a, a cup of tea with us, Wonder Woman." <laughs> Because that's something I come across a lot. There's a lot of that in uh, Hellblazer. A lot of like, yeah. I read it and I'm like, this is ridiculous. No one talks like this. They're like <laughs> using cockney <laughs> rhyming <laughs> slang all the time. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's been watching. Are you guys familiar with cockney, cockney <laughs> rhyming slang? Uh, you, not in probably not in a way. That... Well. Uh, yeah, we know. What you're basically, saying, like, I mean, core blind. I don't live in London. So yeah. maybe that's how people talk all the time. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, why, whenever why I've read Hellblazer. Why don't we trick you yeah. into doing it for yeah, us demonstrate. so that you become this terrible stereotype? Yeah. <laughs> have, a drink, have, have a few shots before you do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could not. I couldn't do it a lot. But um, shit. What, what's some good ones? Um, well, apple the... and pears is stairs. That's one. Um but you like condense it down so you would just be like my uh going to the apple i don't know that's the thing i don't i've never heard anyone properly talk like that but whenever i read hellblazer everyone is just always talking like that and it's, oh. or it's like i'm gonna go down and have a pint and it's all just written very uh very britishly so i, I think they would do that with wonder woman um yeah I don't know whether she should have been British. I, I was, when I was looking at all the Linda Carter stuff, I was like, her costume is super, like, American, which hadn't occurred to me before. Yeah. And I was wondering is. why. Yeah. Is there, like, a story reason? Yeah. Is there, like, a... Well, does she design she it to, to be... It's because she didn't go to London, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> but... But it's, I, is it I, supposed I... to be her armor? Because if so, assume, why is her armor American? I would assume it's the time period in which she was created is right when... I don't know the exact year I should look, but I would guess that it was right as the United States was entering into World War II. And she, yeah. she and Captain America, as opposed to Superman and Batman, were created probably as a direct result of not war propaganda, but, you know, that that sort of... American fighting spirit, for lack of a better way to put it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that was the conclusion I came to. Um, yeah. I think for my, I'm picturing the colors for mine as not having any white in them. Uh, no offense to uh, uh, <laughs> Americans. <laughs> I just, I don't think they had any white in the movie. And it kind of just... Really? 
I don't know. Did they? In the movie, God, she was think, red actually, or maroon, might be, navy, and gold. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. Think about that. Because just from a story standpoint, for me, it, it didn't make sense. So I wasn't picturing it as very yeah, uh, super American, but just red and yeah. blue. Like dark right, red and right. blue. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to... I said earlier she's red, white, and blue with gold, but actually she's red, blue, and gold with a little bit of white. Now that you mention it, you're right. See, for me though, the stars on her underpants and wherever else though, like that's always those are always white unless they make them, you know, gold or sparkly or something. But yeah, but I also, I mean, I've I certainly put stars. Like, what's that? I've certainly put stars. There's a lot of stars in this. Seems like she needs uh, I've got stars. To have like... stars. You could do stars yeah, as armor, I... though. I, I, I think. Yeah, exactly. Also, got, that's like... something I was staring at. I was looking at her star that I drew, and I was like, "There's a W in there somewhere, isn't there?" And I was like, "Yeah, you could you could take a W from the star and t- turn it into something in her costume somewhere." With your redesigns, I mean, um, Todd, you're the one doing it in color currently. But uh-huh. and Johnny, you touched upon it a little bit too. Is there any color changes you would drastically make to the character? Because I think when you think about Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman lined up as the Trinity, uh, there is that color coordination of her and Superman that, yeah. though not um, intentional, I think is visually apparent. Yeah. Um, are there any drastic changes to her color palette that you guys would make, uh, whether it's making those colors darker, like the movie where she's more marooned, maroon, navy, and like bronze or goldish, or That's good. something more drastic, like um, like the way I'm envisioning this design that I'm doing is mm-hmm. her her cloth elements are a navy, and yeah. her armor elements are mixed between like a gold and a silver. Mm-hmm. So, like, almost nixing the red entirely to not have any hmm. visual correlation to the Superman iconography. Hmm. That's weird, because when I was looking at yours, like, just the sketches that you showed us before and stuff, and looking at it now, I was picturing it very blue and with no red. So that is weird that that came across <laughs> already. Great minds. Think alike, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> See when I when I was looking at pictures of her and I saw her red boots, I was like, oh, I I it drove home. I was like, I have to, I have to make because I was going to make her boots, I think, blue or gold, I think, for a second, and then I was like, oh no, I got to make them red somehow. So I I kind of feel like red's got to be played up in her costume somehow, but I don't know that for sure. Yeah, I would say with mine, I would probably focus a little more on red than blue. Um, I probably. Uh, just to just to make the point here, I might I might even make the bluer elements, you know, the the shorts yeah. here and the the leather straps and all that. I might even make those a little bit more. I don't want to say purple, but add a little bit of red into those yeah. blues. So I, I I guess purple. Um, because red red I think would be red and gold would be the dominant colors for this one. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, for mine, I think for coloring on mine, I'm only going to use... I'm going to keep it white with, like, one color. And I think I'm going to make that red. And maybe make the sky red as well. I'm not sure. That would be cool. But uh, red is definitely the bit that stands out for me. Johnny, that makes sense with your God of War influence as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I touched on earlier the the war paint I'm putting on it. That's going to be red. Yeah. Red and then just are always little, cool looking, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That'll be fun. And then just little yeah. touches of red in her costume. Yeah. But I don't think I'm going to use any other color. Hmm. Hmm. Are you guys a fan of... Do you guys know who Evil Knievel was? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Evil motorcycle guy. I, I that was a guy that I I didn't this time, but I looked up pictures of him in the past and thought, how could I make a female evil Knievel Wonder Woman costume looking thing? Yeah, he, he conscious level. 
he seems pretty Wonder Woman in his costume. <laughs> yeah. I can see how you or, can make that connection. Or something. Or maybe they're coming from the same place of like the, the American flag as, as racing stripes. Evil Knievel crashed a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's well known for <laughs> crashing. <laughs> Here, I'll tie it back to um, to Todd's question a while ago about Wonder Woman's uh, arch nemesis. Oh yeah, like I always associate Wonder Woman with Ares, and yeah, that connection of like liberty and liberation versus war and oppression. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like an instant, like oh, that makes perfect sense to me. Connection. Well, I'm disappointed if that's not her father in the comics. I think they should have done that. <laughs> well, here's here's a here I'll I'll add this to that question, Michael. Is so as you guys probably know, the Kingpin was originally a, a Spider-Man villain and one that was not super well loved or respect. He's kind of like kind of laughed at, and Frank Miller not only stole him for Daredevil but turned him into his own character and now I think most people when they think of the Kingpin think of him as essentially Daredevil's arch nemesis so could you think of a character that you would steal and make Wonder Woman's nemesis that maybe people hadn't thought about like say maybe Catwoman should be Wonder Woman's nemesis maybe that's not a good probably got to be somebody with superpowers but also should it does she have does she have to have a female uh nemesis Todd I you love know? I love what you're throwing out there I do cuz I'm going to say I'm going to say Raz al Ghul mm. Ooh yeah. Oh, yeah 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 they're both damn they're both immortal damn, Mike. characters they're both they lived through um experiences of different eras um yeah they both represent different ideals of what's right for um the future of humanity. Yeah. That's like the first one. That's like, oh, Wonder Woman and Razzle Ghoul. Yeah. And he wants to take over the world, whereas she wants to change it through good actions. Yeah. She wants yeah, to that's convince great. people rather than force people. So you're right. They are fundamentally different characters in that sense. Yeah, in that and same, in that like... same vein, uh, Vandal Savage would be would be you know the exact same pitch, just different name. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what's? I actually don't understand Vandal Savage's whole premise. He's an old guy. Wasn't he a caveman or something? Neanderthal? Yeah, he's a he's a mortal. He's a mortal. He touched a magical uh, meteorite, and he yeah. A oh, that's right. Yeah, he's been around for like all of time. So isn't there some story where Superman gets thrust into the future and the only guy left is Vandal Savage and they become friends or something? Yeah, there's a Justice League episode <laughs> that's, oh, that's that, it? yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, Superman grows a beard. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just because he grows a beard. I would, uh, I'd really love for, I'm, I'm not the person to do this, but if somebody would really kind of open up the idea of the lasso of truth and play up her having this ability to seek out the truth. Um, just that yeah. as a concept aside from the tool, uh, cause it, it, it's treated right now in a lot of ways. And maybe I just haven't read enough. Well, I, I for sure haven't read enough, but like, that's a huge superpower that she can oh, get yeah. the truth out of anyone. And it's always yeah. just used to like, hey, where's the bomb? Okay, I'll lasso you, and you have to tell me where the, the bomb is. Yeah. You know? No, really, like, expand that. Blow that up into, like, no, that's one of her main powers. Yeah, she's really strong, and yeah. she can lift stuff and, and, you know, break through walls, but she can get the truth out of anyone magically. Yeah. That's... Totally. And no one else can do that. What other superhero can do that? Yeah. Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's different. <laughs> no, he just like he, totally he just like serious. smells the truth serious, or whatever. <laughs> Wonder Woman's not sniffing the truth or hearing it or whatever. No, I'm a Daredevil fan. <laughs> I don't want to clown him, but Did you yeah, like read? that. And that could be like really thematically powerful for a story. 
uh, yeah. the idea of, of her and, and truth, you know? Oh, well, I think it's, yeah, it's fundamental to her character about what the truth is. I think that's where that sense of justice comes. It's not what she wants, it's the truth. Yeah, and that's something that I feel like, yeah. while it's definitely been explored because she has the lasso of truth in every iteration of the character, yeah. you could I, I feel like you could play around with it even more in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Did you guys did you guys read Superman Year One that Frank Miller did? I, I read a little bit of it. Um, I kind of fell off because I'm not I'm not a huge fan of of uh, Frank's take yeah. on on Superman. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely need to go back and read it before I just lump it in with the rest of his Superman stories, you know, yeah. from from the Dark Knight and stuff, which yeah. I love. But Superman in those those stories is not. Yeah. He he's more of a in service of a Batman story, which I I can respect and appreciate. But absolutely. He's the reason I bring it up is I I really liked it, but I understand that not I, not everybody liked it. But at the end, uh. Wonder Woman and Superman and Batman are all standing around. They've got the lasso of truth around Lex Luthor and are making him spill his beans. And as she's as she's getting the truth out of him, Batman's like, "Man, look at that thing! You can get the truth hmm. out of anybody." Oh, the things I could do with that. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, I was like, that. There's got to be a storyline coming where you know Batman's like, oh, hey, Diana, yoink. <laughs> yeah, and what if there were consequences for it? You know that it wasn't. Well, yeah. Because I, I like I like those kind of things too, where it's like, yeah, it does this great thing, but there's also a flip side to it to balance it. You know, like uh, like Spawn, he uses his powers, and it takes a little bit of a little bit of time away from him or whatever, something like that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, or like Doctor Strange, like it, it steals a little bit of his soul every time he uses magic. Yeah. I feel like with something that powerful, there's almost got to be uh, a, a flip side of balance to using something like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the same thing as the kryptonite dilemma um, in the sense that if you, you, if you have kryptonite in a story and it's too easily accessible, it negates right. Superman's strength completely. Yeah. But in the same way, you need Kryptonite because without it, he's too strong. He's too, yeah, he's too powerful. So with like That's Wonder true. Woman, like if, if you were to take like this take that I'm doing where she like comes to life from a, a Greek statue, right? That lasso of truth could limit her time that she's not as a statue, right? Maybe every yeah, time yeah. she uses it, she loses an hour. Right. Um, theoretically right yeah something like that yeah i think you do need to have like some kind of limit or cap because i i don't know of any wonder woman weakness off the top of my head like i can't tell you what kryptonite for colloquial terms would be yeah yeah that's a good well i i kind of part of why she appeals to me a bit more than superman sorry nate is uh (laughs) (laughs) i just thought Again, I don't know that much about her. I'm talking about how she appeals to me more, and I haven't read very much Wonder Woman. But uh, I was under the impression she just kind of, like, say, Spider-Man or someone, is, like, real strong. Doesn't have, like, a specified weakness, but, like, she isn't, like, unbreakable without, like, having a kryptonite, you know? Mm, Yeah. Like, Superman just can't really be beaten without kryptonite, as far as I have seen and i don't find that that appealing whereas i kind of just thought wonder woman was like yeah really strong but definitely less powerful than superman and so could just be beaten i definitely think that's a fair approach too because then it's not that's how i would (laughs) yeah then it's not about the like what do they use to overpower her um it's Mm -hmm. it's more so about the fact that she was overcome by someone else. Yeah, exactly. I'm all for depowering like every superhero except for Flash. I don't know if I touched on this in the Flash episode, but Flash is one of the only superheroes that I think should have godlike abilities. Hmm. I think if he's going to run fast enough to go back in time, like that's not just oh he's, yeah, he's no, he's really fast. No, he's He's, yeah. you know, the speed force makes him almost a god. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whereas, like, Superman is, yeah, Superman's fast. Yeah. 
you know? And, like, Superman and Wonder Woman should be, wow, yeah, they're pretty strong. They can lift a fire truck, you know? Which is yeah. insanely strong. If you take yourself out of the superhero realm, imagine lifting a fire truck. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, well, I think uh, I'm... I'm this is going to be sacrilegious to any Flash fans. Um, but I think, Mike, you've touched on a similar thing, so you might agree with me here. But if I was going to do Flash, I would dial that way back. I would not have him able to travel through time. I would just have him be a guy who runs faster than anyone can and faster than cars. But, like, mm. I don't know. I, I think a lot of Flash fans will hate me for that. But, um, no, dude, I, I 100% I don't care. <laughs> I think yeah. one, of the, one of the issues that made me drop really? the main title from the rebir rebirth era for the flash was they started introducing things of like different elements or usages of the speed force so like one of the powers the flash can have now is he can essentially use it to turn into the hulk oh what, what? yeah and and that really frustrated me just yeah that's weird like, yeah like, like, that's lame that's not what the character is uh, about it's not about like what cool powers can this random guy have it's it's the speed it's how he uses the speed to solve yeah problems. and yeah. That's yeah. Lame. but i definitely think there's a point for both and that's the because... thing like oh sorry what were you saying johnny oh i was just gonna say similarly to that like that is the opposite of what i would do with him because i would also just not have him have like <laughs> really any other powers i don't know i'm assuming in comics he is like super strong um as well as being really fast i would just have him like like say in a fight he's as strong as anyone else but he'll just hit you like a fucking hundred times like that's all i would have is his yeah when i is when i say like yeah when i say like godlike abilities i mean just the speed and i guess yeah. the ability to resist that that speed yeah, he, he's not strong. He's He can't turn into the Hulk. Didn't know that was a thing. Um, <laughs> I, I really like, you know, in Kingdom Come, uh, Flash kind of just is the speed force. Oh, he doesn't yeah, even really have a body. Character. You know, I, I, I like that. That's that's sort of like in my, in my head yeah. canon. That's where the mature, you know, older version of the Flash would end up just being speed. Like just being the speed yeah. force. Oh. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think that like the speed force should lead to really him having any other superpowers. That seems weird and lame to me. Yeah. But interestingly enough, I, I can agree with both of your perspectives on the character because I think with the flash, you could have an opportunity where like, imagine a character who's so divorced from it's kind of like Dr. Manhattan. Uh, so divorced from, right. like, yeah, from our yeah. perception of, of what is existence, who yeah. like the other heroes constantly have to like appeal to of like, hey, Barry, intervene. But Barry's over here like like observing molecules at yeah. <laughs> is infinitely beyond anything we could comprehend, you know? Yeah. I think that would be a really cool take on that character as well. But I also agree with Johnny in the sense that like if you depower him, you like you can either do one or the other. If you depower him, it gives more story opportunity in the sense that he's not just overpowering everybody else in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but the problem with making him more aloof like Dr. Manhattan is that Wally West and Barry Allen are two of the more fun personalities in the DCU. You know? Yeah. yeah. He's the guy that jumps yeah. around and You'd, you'd, you'd want him to come to your children's birthday party or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although you, I hadn't thought of him like that Maybe. until you said said it, Mike, like just being really detached. But that would be a really quite like funny and interesting take on the character, I think. I mean, funny, not in yeah. the story. It wouldn't be played for comedic value. But I would find that funny. Come. I haven't, I haven't, I don't, <laughs> I haven't read Kingdom Come, come to be honest. Oh, you haven't? Wow. No, I still haven't. I know of it. And I've seen all the art and everything, but I have not read it. It's good stuff. Is that how he is in it? Is he super, like, detached? Yeah. Somewhat, it's almost yeah. like he's he's come, he's come everywhere at once, and he's almost blurred out of existence. So it's like you can't necessarily have a conversation with the guy, maybe. But it's kind and of... He, does, he doesn't really, like, have a body. Yeah. He's, yeah, he's it's like a, a, just a red it's blur. A great take on the character. 
He's not a big part of the story, though, so it, it is just kind of like a fun thing that, you know, Mark Wade just kind of like threw out there and then was like, all right, yeah. have fun have fun looking at that panel that he's in. Yeah. <laughs> but he's a great visual, and he's got that, that Mercury hat on. Yeah. And just, just, just the idea, they're like, well, Central City is real safe because Flash is everywhere all at once, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Flash is interesting because it's in a sense like you'd have to make him um, science fiction your stories would have to get weirder and weirder just because it's probably hard to figure out what to do with them sort of like Superman you know that's why it's so interesting that you know the the Justice League is a thing because all of these characters come yeah. from vastly different backgrounds and really yeah. should serve as vastly different stories. Yeah. You know, Batman, Flash, and Wonder Woman really should not ever be in the same story, but they are. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, Aquaman and Wonder Woman work, Superman and Wonder Woman, that works. But mm. yeah, the like Batman and Wonder Woman, really they should probably never cross paths. That was yeah. one of my issues with um, Brian Hitch recently was the artist on a Justice League run. And I mean recently as in like yeah. know, several years ago. It might have been actually the beginning of Rebirth, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it um, might have been. But that that run really left a sour taste in my mouth for that reason of like you have – like there was a scenario in maybe the first or second issue where the Justice League, which literally consists of Superman – a practical god, Wonder Woman, a practical god, two Green Lanterns, and the Flash, also practically a god, like being overpowered or not being able to work their way out of a situation. <laughs> when in huh. reality, it's like these characters are infinitely powerful. Yeah. Like, a threat that would bring them together should be absolutely like world threatening. Yeah, it has to be. It has to be crazy. Yeah. So they what? It's because they couldn't get along, or it was just too complicated for them to. Like, I think what it was happened? something that overpowered them. I can't. I can't quite remember because I haven't read the issue in several years. Mm. Um, but it it really, <laughs> it really irritated me just out of that standpoint of like these characters were stuck in a situation, and it wasn't out of like Superman stuck with Kryptonite and mm -hmm. you know those kind of or Martian Manhunters stuck with fire like traditional reasons why a character couldn't work out of a situation based off their power set. Right. I mean, personally, I would dial them all back. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I agree with that approach generally. Um, I mean, even with the flash, uh, yeah, you could definitely do it. These guys don't need to be, I don't want to. I was going to say unbelievably strong because it's all unbelievable. It's all ridiculous. But yeah, there's definitely a point where you don't even know how you you really write yourself into a corner if they can just do anything. And maybe that's exactly. what you're talking about, Mike, with yeah. that Justice League story. Like, what are they? It, it's almost unbelievable that they couldn't just immediately solve whatever problem it was or end the crisis that right. that they were in. You know, even just any one of them alone. That's the problem with Justice League stories, too, is is a lot of times it's like, okay, well... And the movie's guilty of it. It's like, they're marking time until Superman can come and beat Steppenwolf up. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's true. Their plan is, we've got to get Superman, because we can't beat him. <laughs> well, it's not a Justice League story, then it's a Superman story. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's why differentiating the characters' strengths and abilities is so important, too. Well, yeah, definitely. You know, like like Superman and Flash, they can't be... Superman cannot be as fast as Flash. Um, I was just going to say, yeah. It, uh, you know, and, and, and Aquaman and Wonder Woman, sure, yeah, they can... They probably should be stronger than Superman. Superman's sort of like a jack of all trades master of none he's got all these powers yeah. but he cannot be the best on the team at really probably any of those 
Except for yeah, maybe, yeah, I, sure he can fly the best. <laughs> you know, maybe. Right. Yeah, I definitely agree. That's. Yeah, I would dial all of them back so much, and you know, and Wonder Woman is is the natural leader, I think, of the league. Mm. Yeah, it, it's so funny you just bring that up Nate, because I was waiting to interject and say, "All right, well, here's a pitch with Wonder Woman." Uh, was that I was going to throw out there was Wonder Woman is that natural leader of the team, um, right? She's you know raised and trained to be a a strategic. Um, battle ready leader yeah right but if you could pitch a team of maybe three or four characters for a wonder woman led team who do you think you would put on that team with her hmm oh wow that wasn't the justice league i mean they could be a mem- like they could be members of the justice league like you could have batman on that team for example but mm-hmm. i would probably keep the justice league largely as it is just yeah have her as the leader i think i mean I, I, i'd want martian manhand to be in there but he's one of them right you would assume i don't know what's going on with martian manhunter these days he may have a mini series going right now or a a a run going he did at one point recently mm-hmm. that I think was more like detective based if I'm not mistaken but yeah he he in the same yeah. way of Wonder Woman is a character I think that oftentimes gets overlooked and misinterpreted uh, yeah. yeah absolutely yeah I don't I don't know about about a like a small team book. That's that's interesting. Of like characters that would mesh well with one one. Off the top of my head, I'm not. Man, I'm not coming up with much. One of the more recent Brave and the Bold runs. Um, one of the first arcs was Wonder Woman teaming up with Batman uh, for a fantasy adventure. And as much as I don't, I don't ship that pairing. Um, I think that's an interesting combination of Batman being somebody who is um, also tactically intelligent, but so much less merciful and um, compassionate. (laughs) Yeah, that would be cool. I like that as a pairing. Maybe a, maybe a team up with Captain Marvel. Um, Oh yeah. Could be, could be cool. There's a lot of mythology shared mythology there um and like magic stuff <clears throat> absolutely actually that's a good that's a good one yeah i, like I don't that. know who else i would throw in there i want to say aquaman but i feel like that's like a pretty overpowered team yeah and i i don't i don't really like that team so two stories aquaman and wonder woman but that's that's kind of been done before but yeah captain marvel slash shazam whatever his name is now shazam i guess um and yeah, Wonder Woman could be really fun. Wonder Woman versus Black Adam would be cool. So yeah, that that could be a fun avenue to take. That's, yeah, that seems like that a, at some point. Yeah, I think you're right. With the popularity of Wonder Woman in the films and. Uh, the star power yeah. of Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, man. I think, that's, I think <laughs> yeah. that's a battle we might get at some point. Yeah, I think that they would be pretty evenly matched in, in like a physical fight. That would be... That would actually be really cool. I'm almost tempted to say I want to see a team-up between Wonder Woman and Guy Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to subject Diana to that. <laughs> But I kind of want to subject Guy Gardner to it. <laughs> oh, true, true, true. Yeah, on the flip side, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would watch. That would be... Well, are you talking about comics, movies, or both? Or I was thinking comics, but any anyway, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Guy Gardner getting his comeuppance. Well, that's always good, yeah. 
vigilante. <laughs> Just a cowboy. <laughs> Just the cowboy version of vigilante on Themyscira. Yeah. <laughs> Shooting, you know, demigods and stuff with his six shooters. Yeah, I want that. That would be cool. Yeah. I'm a sucker for cowboys, though. Absolutely. How are your uh, Wonder Woman's coming out? We can do some spotlighting. Uh, pretty good, I think, over here. Well, I'm actually erasing some of the pencils. Yeah, I've got I've got some stuff. Some white in here is getting a little messy. Um, I did end up just going with Steve Trevor down here. He's getting tied up. Uh, don't know if he likes it or not, but <laughs> uh, oh man, that looks great. That pillar oh, in you. the background. Thank man. you. That looks really. Yeah, great. I was. I was nervous how that was going to come out because I, I thought that making these little strokes down the column should be pretty easy to just take the brush and kind of lay it really flat and drag it down. But yeah. sometimes that really works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm so glad that it did on this one. Yeah, it looks so good. Thank you. Yeah, that yeah I need to... Incredible. I'm going to go in with a brush pen so I don't have to ink my, my brushes up again. A lot of times when I'm drawing, uh, when I'm doing sort of the final touches, I'll take like the brush pen like this and go in and touch things up, kind of give my brush a break. A lot of times after I've been drawing for a while, it gets, in this one actually, there's a lot of like kind of grayed out inks because I've been kind of dipping it in water to give it a break, clean it off a little bit, and then dipping it back in the ink, but the water's still on it, so it gets a little grayed out, which I don't mind, but... When I'm doing sort of the final touches, I'll break out just a uh, whatever you call these little brush pens that you squeeze the little reservoir. Uh, wa water brushes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. Or some, something like they've got yeah. a name. I'm blanking on it. Yeah, it's all it's all in Japanese, so I don't know. Um, mm. but also I don't really mind like beating the shit out of these brushes. Right. I'm not really, so I'll kind of like really just kind of lay them on their sides and run them over, <laughs> run them over an area. Yeah. Laying in a little bit more of this like wheat that I have in the background with this thing too. Making sure that it's not floating above the rocks and everything. That's a problem that I have a lot when I've got something in the background is I won't actually touch what it's supposed to be behind, and so it looks like it's floating hmm. above it. I feel like that's an easy thing to do. What did you do with... How's, uh, how's y'all's going? Do what? I was going to ask, what did you do with the um, the top of her outfit? Is that like a, like a wrapping? Like under the breastplate? Uh, like what, what am I... Like what uh, yeah, is it's... That? It's kind of it's kind of wrinkles, I guess. Um, I was actually one of my favorite takes on the character, visually, just because everything he does is amazing. Uh, is what Jay Lee did in the, um, I think it was in the Batman Superman New Fifty Two run that he illustrated, and it was like the Earth Two Wonder Woman design. He he sort of just like laid in. And I don't even know if it was supposed to be like the new 52 sort of like inline design elements she had on that costume or if they were wrinkles because it wasn't that design since it was Earth 2. But I really loved that so I just stole it. <laughs> I think it was a good move. It looks cool. Yeah, and, and a little bit of it too from a black and white standpoint was just adding a little bit more black and white balance to her figure, getting a little bit more of it up top. Um, on her straps up here, uh, those are mostly black too for that reason. Added in a little bit of that like blacked out reflection thing and the gold of like the 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 bust here, the breastplate, whatever it is. Just to I, I, I like to add black wherever I can because I feel like it really bring something off of the page. That's something I struggled with a lot in my earlier days 
um, really before I started using a brush primarily was there just was never enough black in my drawings. And every artist I liked used a lot of black. I think that's one of your strong suits in your art too, though. Oh, thank you. Have a very confident usage of black. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good to hear. Yeah, I'm really kind of struggling with how I want these uh, like little leather Greek straps to play against the shorts because the shorts are largely a black shape in this drawing, and I really want them to probably be the same color. And so playing with those being largely black as well is sort of giving me fits. But they're raised above it, so they shouldn't just be blacked out like the shorts, which I have mostly blacked out. I should probably go in and just do it all in black to make it just a shape, but I don't know. A lot of a lot of uncertainty in the the middle section of Diana here. How's y'all stuff going? Mine's going pretty good. I'll uh, zoom. It's in looking on. it's looking good. She's huge. I love it. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I really yeah, like the, yeah. the, the height of her. That's why I, I wanted to throw in like the element of the car and the uh, building. I'm going to white out some of these rocks that I had thrown in as debris. Um, mm. I don't think it's really needed in the composition. Um, so I'm going to clean up some of my penciled areas and um, get rid of some of this extraneous or extraneous things that I had thrown in there that aren't really needed. And then um, clean up with some white out here and there for like, like this spot right here. I, I touched with my finger that had some, ink uh -huh. left, but, but yeah, other than that, I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of this redesign. I like how it came out. I think it's very confident and very um, imposing, which is something I really wanted from the character. I wanted her to yeah. be somebody who um, wasn't just typically, um, in terms of comic typical, um, in terms of her female form. I wanted her to feel very um, imposing, very dominant mm -hmm. in her environment. Yeah. And I think the height definitely adds to that, but... Yeah, and I love that you have, like, a concept with it, too. I sort of approach mine with, like, uh, this is sort of a, what, like... And if, if I were just to design the DC Universe, this is something that maybe Wonder Woman would look like this. But I love that you revisited, like, even just the entire concept of the character and really made her your own with this. That's awesome. Thanks, man. It's not. I'm not really loving what I'm doing with the smoke here, but it's not that big of a deal. I can always. Are you gonna? Are you gonna color it, Michael? Yeah, I think I am. I think for the purposes of it being a redesign, I think it'll mm -hmm. it'll really help bring to life it's... what I was envisioning. Yeah, that makes sense. How's yours coming out, Todd? Uh, I don't know if I've accomplished a whole lot <laughs> since. I... <laughs> That's why I'm trying to try to shut up and draw a little bit, but um, I don't know. I've added some highlights, but I don't know if you can tell a difference between what you looked at it last time or not. I don't know. No, it's looking good. That lasso looks awesome, man. Thanks. Oh man, yeah. I'm I'm adding some highlights to her hair and um, trying to figure out what else is necessary exactly. Part of me wants to leave it flat, and part of me wants to render it, so I can't decide. I like those highlights you did on her uh, her bangs. Yeah, I like them. Um, hair is super tricky, man. Hair is really hard sometimes. But that, that was a fun one. I don't know. Women, women's faces are always tough. Um, yeah, they can be really delicate and go sideways really fast. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because you don't mind on a man's face, just like yeah, drawing the hell out of it. Way. You can yeah, make yeah. them. You can make them a little ugly, and it still works. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, like a woman's face, you do. You want to add, and this isn't even my approach. I can't remember who said it. But yeah, you almost you you don't want to draw as much. You want to yeah. do less lines 
make things yeah. a little less cluttered. I can't remember who said yeah. that, but yeah, somebody turned me on to that approach and I was like, yeah, that's actually exactly what you need to do to make sure that yeah. the face looks feminine. Yeah. I know Mobius complained about it. He was like, he was like women's faces. You have to draw them so perfectly or else it doesn't work. Yeah. It might've, it might've been Mobius. I, yeah, it was one of those old master dudes. Yeah. A Mobius Wonder Woman would have been awesome. Oh yeah, Mobius anything is pretty awesome. But did he yeah. did he ever draw Wonder Woman? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I know he drew he, he drew he drew a lot of those a lot of the DC characters, uh, at least did for he? single illustrations. Yeah, I know uh, there's definitely a Superman uh, that I yeah, can think I of. There's got to be a Wonder Woman or a Batman. Uh, yeah, there's a Batman for sure. I'm gonna look yeah. it up. Mobius. Yeah, I was gonna say, Google, here we come. <laughs> Wonder Woman, give it, give it a quick goog. Yeah, he did a great uh, Electra and Iron Man and Punisher and Iron. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Who else? Some Marvel I, Man. I'm not finding a Wonder Woman. Bummer. Wow. Well, and he did um, yeah. super, uh, Silver Surfer Parable. Yeah. As, sure, his big, yeah. as his big Western work, Western yeah. comics work that is. Yeah. Yeah, actually, a lot of the search results are for uh, some statues. Is I guess is Mobius like a manufacturer of statues or something? Because there's like a Linda Carter Wonder Woman, a uh, Golden Age Wonder Woman, and like a movie Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. I don't know, but yeah, there's no like huh. there's no Mobius the artist, at least that I can find. There's no public drawings of Wonder Woman, which is yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Yeah, that's surprising. Can you imagine his Themyscira with the detail? Oh my god! Oh really my god! Cool. Oh man! Yeah, I was looking at his Blueberry. You guys ever read his Lieutenant Blueberry strips? Uh, a little bit, yeah. And um, the end papers, in other words, you know, you open it up and and it's just like the end papers are just the town that he drew. And I was like, I can't believe how much detail there is. Like, you oh, could, I know. You, this is all the reference you'd need to draw a Western right there. Like you could use, you could just have that open all the time and be like, Oh, how do I draw a horses trough, a saloon? I mean, you name it, everything's in it and none of it seems cluttered. I was just like, good God. Crazy. Yeah. He's sort of like, I love him, but if, yeah, if there was ever a more opposite artist from what I do, yeah. I'd like to see it because yeah, Mobius is it. <laughs> he just makes it look so easy. Oh yeah. He had to try it. it. Nothing. He puts so much detail, but it never looks cluttered. Whereas I think you know, like like to me, Jeff Darrow. I love that guy, but his stuff, in a sense, has a cluttered element to it, and I, I appreciate that about it. But it's kind of like if you put any shadows in there, you would lose everything. Whereas yeah, like Mobius, yeah, you're right. Mobius' stuff, it's so open. Even though yeah. there's so many marks. Yeah. It's like so, it so work. open. Yeah. It shouldn't work, but it does for some reason. Speaking of Europeans, I'm zoomed in on Johnny, our resident European <laughs> here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How's your piece coming out, Johnny? I'm uh, not a European anymore, actually. That's true. Oh, yeah. Oh, true. Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, I voted to stay, but um, we won't get into that. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going pretty good. Must, I'm pretty happy with it. I've started all my reds. Uh, yeah, it's looking awesome. Getting all that wall paint in there. Good I don't know boy. whether I've overdone it. There's a lot in there now. <laughs> maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll dial back how dark a red that is. I think that's probably well due. I'll probably make it a little lighter. But for now, I'm just kind of blocking it in there. And I'm pretty happy with how it's going. Figuring out, like, where to put, like, red touches on her armor as well. I'm thinking at the moment, like, all the stars, I think, are going to be red. Maybe. Although I might encounter a problem there, because I kind of want the gauntlets to be red. Mm. Well, I'll figure that out as I come to it. 
That's something that I struggle with, uh, what you were saying about the red, is I have a really hard time picking colors that work. I, I know, like, the color I want. And I do, I, when I go into it, I don't think I'm picking just the absolute most saturated version of that color. And I'll pick something mm. that looks really desaturated, and I'll go to, like, paint with it on my iPad, or, or even, like, with watercolor or whatever. And I'm like, well... That's just blue. That's just royal blue. Yeah. And I thought it was going to be something different. I don't... And it's usually by the time I finish a drawing and I'm really happy with it. And so I'm like, well, I'll take it into Photoshop and tone everything down. And it gets it gets weird. But yeah, that's something I struggle yeah. with really hard. Uh, the first few is just a ray gun cowboy. The colors are crazy saturated. And I wish that I would have done them differently. Yeah. But I, I just I can't see it until I'm done. Yeah, it, that was. I was just gonna say it helps me to like go away from it and come back, and then I like fuck about with the colors a little usually. Yeah, because I like I go away and I'm like, oh wow, that's all like, just yeah. So they're all like fighting for attention a lot of the time when I'm using multiple colors. Yeah, it's hard to pick like a dominant color. That's something I'm trying to do mm -hmm. more. Is like this if it's comics, like this panel is gonna be this color with these supporting colors or if it's an illustration uh a really good exercise for me was i would do exactly what you're doing right now i would just pick a color and it would yeah. be black and white but with that color that really helped me a lot yeah it's very fun to do i think oh yeah but yeah get, like, it's like a really it. easy way to make something just look fucking awesome i think yeah i say easy yeah, it's also definitely. really hard to know exactly what you're doing where to put those colors Mm. That's the hard yeah, thing. When, I, when you when are I've so been, like, limited. Working on, when I've been working on like covers, if I'm like struggling with the colors of it, and I feel like I'm chucking in a way, like way too many colors, a lot of the time I'll step back and try, like you said, just being like, okay, what if I got rid of all of these colors and just made it like one color, maybe yeah. two? And a lot of the time that works out way better. Yeah, with the with the last issue of Raygun, uh, pretty much each panel. I would I would pick two colors to primarily handle that panel with. And a big reason for that was there's some flashback in that issue. And I was like, the flashbacks will look visually different from what's happening currently with, you know, in the first issue, it's very neon and a lot of colors sort of laid on top of each other. And I was like, mm. these flashbacks, I'll pick sort of a primary color and then... A lot of times it was like an off-white or something that I would use as like a secondary color. But then I was like, well, the whole these panels look great. These pages look great. The whole book should look like this. And so yeah. sometimes I, I would go in and do like a third color, and there would be some little flecks of maybe a fourth or fifth color. But yeah, it'd be one or two colors, really, for, for a lot of those panels. And that, I think, made the pages a lot stronger. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You, I find that a lot of the time. You're saying you pick a you'd pick a primary color and then you'd do an off white as your secondary color? Uh sometimes, yeah, for those flashbacks. Uh there's one page where the flashback oh, so is so mostly so. blue and then there's like a yellowish cream to uh, sort of do some of the other shapes in. And then there's yeah. another flashback and the the primary color is almost like a it ended up being a hot pink, the problem that I was talking about, where I thought it was desaturated. And I finished the page, and I was like, yeah, that's hot pink. That's great. Uh, but yeah, and then it was, I, I want to say, yeah, it was white on that one. Just like pink and white. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I think it can just, it can work really, really well. Um, I, I Jason Latour does the same th thing with the, uh, in Southern Bastards, with all of the yeah. Any flashbacks? It's all just red, and it looks so cool. Yeah, with a lot of standalone illustrations that I've done for uh, for comics or, or, or just whatever, I've I've taken that approach of I'll have black, white, and then a color. Um, Michael Cho does that uh, with some of his stuff. And I think his stuff is actual paint most of the time. But a lot of times I'm really scared to commit to a color on the actual artboard. So I'll, at the very least, scan it in, play around with it, and procreate or fresco. 
and then if I like it, go back to the board and just try and replicate what I've done digitally. Yeah. I did that with um, the political cartoon that I posted the other night after the debate. I did that with the charcoal aspect of that. Oh, shut up, man. Uh, <laughs> 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 but yeah, I was, I was really unsure. I, yeah, yeah. I was really unsure of... Uh, <laughs> of uh, the charcoal element of it. So I, I scanned it in, did it digitally, liked it, and so then I just tried to, as accurately as I could, recreate what I was doing. And this is the portion of the show where we all talk over each other and Chris Wallace <laughs> tries to rein oh us all God. in. Gentlemen, gentlemen, that was, this is a Wonder Woman really episode. Funny. Man, Chris Wallace seemed actually shook up. <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. He left and got a drink. Uh, did he? <laughs> I I don't. I'm sure he did. Yeah. I mean, good right lord. Back. Fuck you guys. I I could not believe what I was watching. Anyway, Wonder Woman yeah. wouldn't stand for it. She should be the moderator. No, it's cool. I can edit this out. It's not a big deal. But yeah, <laughs> it was a crazy, crazy watch. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. God bless you know, the I, USA. I, I, uh, yeah. It, right, Joe, Johnny? Joe Biden, shut up, man. That, that, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the funniest joke I've heard. Yeah. Time. Will you just shut up, man? Will you just shut up, man? <laughs> yeah, that was good. Just shut up. I love it when he. I love it when he says, "Man, come on, man." <laughs> it's like, oh. He's, he's yeah. Got, he's got a cool grandpa in him there somewhere. If he can. <laughs> oh yeah. You know. Yeah. Deep within him, he has to bring it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> And he came out and told him he was the worst president. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, man. You're the worst president this country has ever had. Come on, Yeah, man. straight up said it. That's so funny. Shia LaBeouf from that, uh, that Fast Times at Ridgemont High reading. Can you just come on? Come on. Can you come on? <laughs> Can you just come on? That was... <laughs> That was Chris Wallace and, and Joe Biden that whole time. Can you just come yeah. on? Yeah. <laughs> Who's playing Joe Biden on Saturday Night Live these days? Do you guys have any idea? No I, idea. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I would like to see the parody of that on there. Yeah, definitely. I can't imagine they'll let that one slide. Yeah, because I think SNL's actually back now, which is exciting. Yeah, I haven't paid attention, but yeah, I didn't like. Um, I know that a couple of other programs tried to do like the um, Parks and Rec Skype in episode, where all the characters were like skyping in as a reunion, and mm -hmm. it just it just didn't work. As much as I loved like seeing all those actors return as like these beloved characters, it mm. there's just something different about watching a group of people in, on television as opposed to them like Skype calling in. Yeah. Thanks everybody for watching this podcast where we're all Skyping into one another, but <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? But I don't know where to all... sign this thing. I've talked about that before on the show, but I don't know where to sign this. Because I think I'm just about done. I'm I'm yeah. to the point now where everything I do, I feel like I'm making a mistake. Mm. That's so I should probably be done. done. Yeah. Uh, actually, on this lasso, there's some stuff. Oh yeah, I just didn't draw this whole part of Steve's jacket. That's cool. Nay, I hit that same point where everything I was doing was just an error, and I was like, "All right, time to erase." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, uh, it's it's kind of nice when that does happen, when you're like, okay, well, I'm done, and this is, a f like, I'm definitely done, because now I'm just breaking out the whiteout and undoing everything that I've done, so it must be finished. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard to see on the uh, video footage, but I just did white out all, like, I, you can kind of see it now, I just whited out all of this shading I had done. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Smoke is hard. Like so smoke hard. And, and, and clouds, that's a really hard thing to, to do. I yeah, still don't know what my approach to it is. 
Procreate. No idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I always, I, I want to break out like a really old, messed up brush and just kind of like dry brush. And sometimes that works and sometimes it looks hideous. There's the, the very first page of oh, Ray Gun Cowboy, a book that I'm pretty proud of, has uh, the main character riding his motorcycle over a dirt road. And so there's this plume of dust behind him and i hate it oh my god it looks terrible i tried my best to fix it digitally and oh it just didn't work i never know if i want to leave it open or add in all of the little textures and details of of all of the debris yeah these are all problems i have i try and go back to uh a lot of the time i'll be like well mignola always makes it so fucking simple yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> like I've kind of done this with this piece, and you always end up just I draw it in, and then I'm like, "Oh, look at that! That's another thing that he makes look really simple and completely isn't." What an asshole! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just tell me how to do it. Yeah. Because <laughs> even if you just replicate how an artist does something most of the time at least for me it does not it doesn't even look close if i decide i'm like yeah. no i'm just going to i'm just going to completely ape how they do smoke and i'll try my best and i think i'm like well i'm just looking at the comics page right here and i'm drawing it and it just comes out and it just doesn't work yeah. somehow and smoke well, is always one of those things for me yeah you know is looking at frazetta if you want to know the, the secret yeah. like that's that's how, that's who he's oftentimes emulating yeah, they say you should look at your heroes and then figure out who your heroes' heroes are. Right. Yeah, if you want to be Howard Chaikin, study Gil Kane and Alex Ho. First, right. I would never say that to Chaikin's face, but he would probably, you know, he'd probably agree with that. Ooh, that's gross. Is there any uh, creators that you guys would want to see on a Wonder Woman run? Um, I already really like. I haven't. The only ones I've read, I've picked up because of the artist, really. And uh, I don't know how you pronounce her name. It's another one where I've only ever like read it and haven't actually ever said it. But uh, Evely Bill Quiss. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, Am I yeah. even close with the pronunciation? No idea. Well, <laughs> enough that we know who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's just, no, uh, what's, her stuff she's is doing Sandman, right? Like, now she's oh my God. Sandman. Yeah, that stuff's unbelievable. Yeah. Her use of so a that's... brush is, is mind blowing. Yeah, yeah, it's insane. So what's those are the only you remember? ones I've read. Isn't she still on Wonder Woman? Oh, is she, is she on Wonder Woman? Uh, I don't think so. What? She's on Wonder Woman. She was. Yeah, she, she. Yeah, she did a run on Wonder Woman. Yeah, she. She did like a. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she did a Sandman book. It was great. Yeah. I don't know I if she's still doing that. that, but. Yeah. No. It's. It is. Oh, yeah. I've. I've had several. You know, iPhone wallpapers from her run, on. Uh, yeah. On that book. Yeah. yeah. The highest, the highest compliment of art. <laughs> <laughs> I knew exactly what you meant, though. I do it all the time. <laughs> I think Paul Pope would be somebody who would absolutely kill it on a Wonder Woman run. Fuck. That would be amazing. Yeah. That would be so good. Like his work on um, Battling Boy. Yeah, that was immediately what I thought of. Yeah. Just screams <laughs> mythology, and he, he would just kill it with Wonder Woman. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't have any. I'd love to see Frank Miller do it, uh, just to round out 
because I know he had notes and ideas, but beyond that, I mean, good question. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure at all. Uh, I'm sure after a little thought, I'll, I'll come up with something tonight. Like, oh, I should have said that person. Yeah, before you go to bed. <laughs> Damn it, that's what I should have said. <laughs> I'm making the sky red in this and making the smoke in the background not red and it's starting to become like a some kind of propaganda poster <laughs> kind of vibe which I don't think I'm opposed to it looks really looks yeah. bold like uh what is it russian uh was it constructionism. constructionism yeah 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 it looks extremely like that I've got <laughs> in the background that's, that's, a, that's a good place to go Stuff's awesome. Well, I like it. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know whether I am going to dial the red back at all. I think mine might be done. Yeah, I'm yeah I think... Uh, too. Yeah, I'm hitting a wall with mine. I think I'm pretty good. All right, cool. Here, why don't we uh, go... I added a little... Uh, I'll zip over oop. to Johnny because he's uh, he's eager, be e eager beaver to uh, showcase what he did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I wouldn't mind getting your guys, you guys' opinions because I added another layer of lighter, like red, to a lot of mine, and I don't know whether it's better with or without. What do you guys think? There's with or without? Can you zoom in when it's with? Yeah. This oh, is it with the smoke trails now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh huh. That's without. So like a lot of the armor I did in pink, like a lighter pink now. I'm I'm liking that one. Are you familiar with, yeah. with um I think his name's Corey Chase? Huh? No, I don't think so. Oh I'll, 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 I'm gonna send him to you immediately after this um recording. He is an illustrator who does comic book work as well. And he does a lot of stuff that's very similar to what you just did in terms of the minimal color palette. With like, oh really, yeah, really like flat line or like like flat black line work, with like mm. those like duotone shades. Um, it's very reminiscent of something he would draw. Okay, cool. All right, I'm interested. Yeah, send it. Yeah. Me. Also, I've only just realized I've, I've been sideways this whole time, have I? <laughs> uh, currently, you are, but I, it's not, I mean, it looks appropriate for like drawing. Like if you turned your tablet right now. We yeah. Up, right. There we go. Yeah, that 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 works. That's all right. You can tell if it's sideways what it is still. Yeah. I'm alright with that. I have no problems. That came out fantastic, dude. Yeah, it looked yeah, good. I'm pretty happy Love her face. One, actually. Yeah, I, the face. If the face is one. I mean, we were talking about it earlier with drawing women. The face was one where I like, first drew it, and I was like. I was like sketching it out like in the pencils and I was like this is all gonna have to be completely redone because it looks so like ugly there's like lines all over the place every bit of it just looked really disgusting and then like just the more I refined it and then worked it down to the inks and like went to the bare minimum I was like oh okay so structurally I had it okay it was just there were too many lines on it I just needed to dial it back a lot and uh yeah I'm pretty happy with the face now yeah, it's an easy problem to run into. I did a book that had a female lead with, uh, there was a lot of heavy shadows in it. And I ran into, yeah, just like way overdrawing the face way mm. too many times. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's tough when you, like with me, I use a lot of shadow, like heavy shadow. And so with like faces of women, it can be quite tough. I usually turn to um, Chris Somney for that. Mm, um, yeah. Like his Black Widow run. Hmm. Like there's a lot of like heavy shadow on the face there, but in a way that looks clean and not too uh, not too heavy on the line or anything. Um, he does like a lot of a thing where like he'll just draw the nose. The only part of the nose he draws is the shadow that it makes. Mm -hmm. If you get me? So the whole yeah, nose yeah. is just one side shadow. That. And that always looks so cool. That's cool. I love that stuff. Yeah.
Well, here I'll I'll zip around. Uh, Todd, do you want to show off what you did? Uh, <laughs> can you see? See very well. It it's not really again. You, uh, yeah, I was gonna say if you hold it and then zoom in, it might um, show more of the detail. Yeah. I'm still kind of niggling around with the details right now. I'm trying to figure out what I need to add or not add. And, um, yeah, I don't know. This is one I might have to go away. From. I think I'm going to have to go away from for a little while and then come back to you and see what I see. <clears throat> I think you did the lasso incredibly well. Like, I oh, the yeah. sparkling effect <laughs> and the way it's glowing in her hand, like in the upper hand where her like fingers are part of the like glowing effect. That's awesome. Yeah. I can't decide. I, I I did that, and then I was like, wait, does that work or not? Because there it is without it. it um, yeah, again, I got to I gotta go away from this for a little while and then come back and see if I see something new, I think. Yeah, with mine, if it was something that I, that I colored digitally, which I might do, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Uh, I would definitely just erase what I did for the lasso and probably redraw it uh, digitally so that it did have you know probably the exact effect that you went for so expect me to steal that from you you should <laughs> <I encourage it. laughs> that's awesome yeah I really think you killed it too with the um, the color choices as well and your color placements in the costume Todd mm -hmm. yeah oh thanks um, we'll see I, I don't know it's definitely not very planned out. Uh, her her top is really all over the place, um, which is fine. Uh, but if I were to have to draw her again, I'd have to figure a few things out. I don't know. We'll see what stays and what doesn't. We'll bop around. We'll go over to uh, to Nate. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> yeah. Tried to get the camera on it because I feel like it was a little bit way over here the whole time. But also, it's exactly where I want my face to be. <laughs> so that's a that's a thing we'll have to figure out. But yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with this. I uh, oh, struggle man. with the yeah. pencils a lot, so I'm I'm glad that it came out. I did just keep this uh, Steve Trevor because after yeah. a couple of beers, I didn't want to draw a new character, so <laughs> <laughs> I just went with him. Yeah, no, that's right. great. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I actually looked at a lot of uh, like art for the Disney Hercules movie going oh, yeah. into this one. I did too. Yeah, because uh, yeah, it's like such a simple look at like the culture that I was going for, um, yeah. albeit probably inaccurate. But uh, you know, all all of the ancient Greeks, I'm sure, won't care. They uh, do a lot of research on those movies. They yeah they they do they do. Uh, one thing that I struggle with was like uh, something that actually Johnny zoomed in on right now on his piece. Um, mm. These little leather strap things uh, coming off the the belt. That's something that oh, yeah. I I will I will revisit probably before I post this piece before I send it over to you, Mike. Um, but overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. I like I like the way her hair turned out. I wanted to give her. Originally, it was just going to be like an updo. Because uh, I think, Todd, I think you said it earlier that there's no way any of these women would be running around with their hair down. Uh, not, not assumably, yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah. Part, of my, part of my Hercules deep dive was looking at some of the character designs for that where it's like kind of up, kind of down, but it's out yeah. of her face. There's no way that her hair would ever get into right. her face. And yeah. so it's like kind of brought back and and uh, tied tied back, even though it's really long. But it's also yeah. up in these different headbands. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I really wanted to play with that because I, I I just worry about her having her hair well, in her face. Yeah. Also, I gave her There's straps up top because I worry about that as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, here, here's here's a handle. I mean, like, it, and I mean, as in, like, if you're fighting somebody, you don't want to give them a handle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. 
or it could get caught in machinery. I mean, like, mm -hmm. there's a reason why women have to, or people have to tie their hair up when they work in certain places or do yeah. certain things, you know? <clears throat> um, something I was going to add to that, but I can't remember what. Oh, yeah. Like, for me, like, my, I keep envisioning both my Wonder Woman and my Batgirl as they run around with motorcycle helmets of some sort. And this, this picture right here of Wonder Woman is after she pulls the, 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 her hair comes tumbling out of the, the, the oh, motorcycle yeah, helmet. Yeah. And, and in a way she's, she's swinging around the lasso as like a showing her, she's having a lap of victory or something. Yeah. I want that book <laughs> really, really bad. <laughs> Which book? Oh, you mean the, the, what Wonder Woman is in a motorcycle outfit? Yeah, Wonder Woman and 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 Batgirl fighting crime, oh, motorcycles. Yeah. I want yeah. I want that. I want your yeah. designs. So basically, <laughs> what I'm saying is, make that book with the permission of DC Comics. <laughs> what was that? I showed you the Batgirl, right? That's that I'm working on. That's, mm, that's yeah. He's wearing a Michael a motorcycle leathers right there. That's that's the premise of it. Yeah, I love that. I, I I can't stand her outfit. I, I don't know if it's changed. I I think it just got redesigned, so maybe it's better now. I don't know. But that, one, that outfit she that scooter outfit she had on for a while just drove oh uh huh yeah with like the leather jacket suit. Yeah, I can't I can't do it. Yeah, that was a uh, was that Cameron Stewart who did that one or probably I think it was. Yeah, I think I think it was. Yeah, yeah. funny funny enough, not funny yeah. enough. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Wah, wah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they they have redone it since then. I I don't I don't uh, hate what she's wearing now. I really didn't like the new fifty two suit. Yeah, yeah. Um, those up. This is uh, uh, sorry. Go on. What was the name of that costume designer you guys turned me on to last week? That that we were all the guy that did the Walking Dead. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, he did. He did. Uh, he did Invincible. Oh, cool. um, yeah, Corey Walker. Yeah, yeah, Corey, Corey Walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corey Walker. All right. Yeah, I was trying to remember. Just a just a genius there. of simplicity in costume oh, yeah. design. Yeah, absolutely. Like just yeah. shape based. I've actually, I've had a, a a couple of Superman designs that I've been workshopping since I was like a freshman in college, and uh, I knew about him then, and I had forgotten about him until last week. And now that I'm looking at his stuff again, I'm like, God, I, I've got to simplify. You can always go in and add details, but the shapes have to be simple, I think. Mm. Yeah. And that's something I think, uh, Todd, you captured really well with, uh, with both of these, uh, these designs, actually, is, is the shapes are so strong. Oh, thanks. Well, I was actually that I was looking at. I did save a bunch of his drawings, and I was looking at those in particular because his hair was so great. He's really good at doing things blowing in the wind, including hair, yeah, capes, you know. But I was just like, oh man, uh, this guy's. I'm both wish I'd seen his stuff sooner and slightly glad I hadn't, so that I didn't <laughs> try to rip him off because <laughs> it would have been really tempting i guess because i i usually see stuff i don't like and i want to change it and that's where i react to but when i see something right. I like I want, I, it's hard i have to go okay now don't steal that it's not yours you can't take that home <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm a i'm a shameless thief of everything that i like <laughs> this wonder woman drawing is is a perfect example i've stolen from yeah probably I Eight or nine different artists that I love. I've stolen it all, put it in a blender, and made a little Wonder Woman margarita out of it. Yeah, <laughs> we're all just products of our influences. It's for everything. Yeah, yeah. I've definitely been there. Well, here, I'll how to? Around. I was gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. move around to uh, my piece now. Yeah, I'm proud of the the redesign. Uh, I mean, the background elements, I'm kind of whatever on. The Wonder Woman design itself, which is the main focus, I think turned out really well. I'm pretty proud of uh, the visual silhouette that I came across with everything. Yeah. 
No, the yeah, stance is great. Like, the shading, all the black placements look great. Love the hair. Yeah. Like, damn. Again, your cars are phenomenal. I, I said that in the flash piece as well. Like, cars are something that I struggle with, and, and it seems, it at least seems like it, it uh, comes easy to you. That's mm. yeah. I was I, just gonna I, say yeah. I appreciate that because I hate cars. I hate <laughs> cars. Really? Yeah, cars. Are draw, like, draw more cars. Always, so hard. Like I'm always drawing cars, and like got I it, got it. I know, like generally, like ideas in terms of like the back should be a trapezoid, the front should be a trapezoid, um, the sides are then also trapezoids to make that roof canopy shape make sense, but. Oh my god, I hate them. I hate drawing cars. So I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate that you guys like them because I can't stand the way I draw cars. That's awesome. But no, I appreciate That's that. That's a good skill to have. <laughs> also, just before we close out, one of the things I, I forgot to mention we talked about a little bit earlier was um, uh, what elements of Wonder Woman like you felt were crucial to keep for the character. And to mm. me... I think the gold suit that she has in the new movie, the Wonder Woman 84 is mm -hmm. incredible looking. And I know it has a bunch of various influences from the comics, but I, there's just something sure. really striking to me about that gold armor. Yeah. And so I really wanted to yeah. pull a little bit of that, like almost Hawkman, Hawk girl esque design mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I'm pretty proud yeah. of the, uh, the shoulder design with these like feather kind of like fringe guards to it. For like movement, yeah, and like move her arm up and back underneath it. Um, so yeah, out of the great. design as a whole, I think it came out pretty well. Yeah, unless that movie's just god awful terrible, I think that look is going to be iconic once it, you know, the movie hits. Yeah, absolutely. It's. I think it's going to stick. It's been a, like a long time coming. Mm -hmm. I know for all of us, or at least for me specifically, not to speak for all of us, I should say. Um, I've definitely <laughs> had a lot more to think about with Wonder Woman as a character, having had this conversation. Yeah, just in, like, yeah, totally has kind of uh, made me reevaluate my relationship with that character and be like, oh, there is a lot that I really <laughs> connect with and appreciate. Whereas I've never really thought about it to that extent before. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> but yeah, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check out our various social media platforms: Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, Nate's Tinder. Um, <laughs> please, please do. Please do. <laughs> As always, Linked guys. below. Hit me up. <laughs> He's waiting for his Wonder Woman. <laughs> That's it's an excellent tie-in. I'm waiting for my Wonder Woman. <laughs> As always, guys, this has been Mike Pickard, joined by my crazy talented co-hosts and friends, Johnny Wise, Nate Wells, and Todd Blackwood. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Nice guys. one. Thanks for tuning in, yeah. everybody.